Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lazarus Expedition. How's everyone doing today? Doing good, yeah. Doing mm -hmm. fabulous. Good, doing okay. good. Not too much to report, but you know. Great. That's uh, that's really what we're hoping for here. So mm -hmm. let's uh, let's hop into game. Who remembers where we were last time? Well, you know I do, Neil. I know but. you do, but what about Mr. Mooted? Does he know what's going on? I know Has what's going on. Has he ever remembered anything? That's right. Last week we were uh, on our skiff, our boat, and we were traveling in the Badlands along the, I don't know, river? I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. And we got attacked by some flying shape, or sorry, flying snake monsters. But Steermere was able to throw down a fog cloud and keep us entirely 100% safe from the monsters. So as we go up the river, having narrowly avoided that encounter, we <clears throat> see a Cyclops plus a ton of other uh, ogres. Mm -hmm. We talk about it for like an hour, about what we should do. Eventually we say, we'll go at night and our plan begins. We go, Cyclops starts hurling shit at us, so we pull over, we kill them all in like four rounds. And now we are Tiny Hut resting outside of the cave that we're gonna go into in the morning. And I'd like to modify the list of events he just gave. For the first time in the entire campaign, we actually laid out a plan. And the second it didn't go exactly the plan, we immediately just turned into the enemies and began combat. <laughs> yep. And it, it worked. Goes. It did work. And it worked. It did work. But the question remains, Mr. Mooton, what's in the cave? Find out this time on the Lazarus Expedition. Find out right now. Yeah, let's go in the cave. You don't want to wait till morning? No, no, we're doing, we'll wait a, till morning. Okay. we're doing a short rest, right? Short rest, short rest, okay. Uh, yeah, I thought I, was, I thought I was setting up alarms to cover the front of the cave, yeah. and then I was going to, you know, set up a tiny hut. Uh, I was Smart. going to collect some ogre teeth, too, real quick, if I have time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One a few of those. Yeah! Just the big, just the big canines, those are the, those are the best ones. So what does it look like when you are collecting ogre teeth? Because an ogre is a, a, a large creature, right? It's got uh, a lot I'm Basically, just hitting the teeth and hoping they come out. Like, he's just, like, bashing it. Maybe <laughs> using my shield for leverage or something. Or if there's, like, a big mm -hmm. rock nearby. I probably chipped a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Ethan, the monster hunter, will come on over and give you a hand with it. This isn't the first time he's removed teeth from creatures. Um, it's sort of wordlessly, just sort of like, this is what we do, right? You, you kill a creature, that's pretty cool. You take its teeth, awesome. Um, but Mott, the healer, will approach the rest of the party and give, like, disgusted looks towards the two of you and say to Cassian, is that... Why are they doing that? I assume it's for uh, magical ingredients. <clears throat> His spells probably need ogre teeth. That's um. You don't. Cassia never lies, right? This is something that he honestly believes. I, this is something that he honestly believes. I wouldn't imagine that they would just be over there pulling ogre teeth out for the fun of it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Mott listens and is well. I hadn't considered that, and uh, quietly, you know, puts herself in a position where her back is to the the teeth pulling. Um, now, while the two of them are pulling teeth, and there, there's the cave just over there as the sun is going down and the shadows are growing long, and you're sitting in the, the shade of the Three Sisters volcanoes. Um, what are the rest of you doing? Is there any concern that something might use the growing darkness as an opportunity to sneak out of the cave? Are there any dangers to be had here? Oh, yeah, I'll see what just watching we're, the cave on alert. Yeah, and we're in the tiny hut, right? So can't be in the tiny hut. I don't think hut. we are in the tiny hut because he's pulling teeth. He hasn't put it down yet. In this oh, okay. But we're going to be in the tiny hut. Yeah, Correct. eventually. Yeah. So I think as the sun's setting, then because of that fear, I'll probably shout over to Iron Grip, like Iron Grip, hurry up! We need the we need the fucking magic house thing. It's getting dark. Uh, 
Iron Grip will call back and be like, okay, uh, and he'll give like one of the big old canines like a final thump. You want you want to check to see if it comes out? What I you, do. I here? want an athletics check. Uh, you've been working on it for a little while, um, but not ideal amounts of time. So let's give you like a DC that actually passes. Yes. Fifteen. Right. Nice work. Perfect. I smash the tooth loose and I string it. Uh, I'd like tie it on a little rope, mm-hmm. like and hang it by my belt. Um, and then I come over and uh, I set about finishing off the last alarms so that each alarm coats. Uh, the tunnel. I think you said it was 40 foot wide. I think mm-hmm. my alarms are... Let me double check the spell. I'll put it in chat just so we can talk about it. I'm going to... Um, sorry, while you're sitting up your alarms, uh, I'm going to move these bodies. I'll talk to the party first. Cassian's idea is to move these bodies into the lava pit so if the fucking flying snake people come, that they're not going to come down here and just have like a feast for two days. Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, with some help, you can roll the ogres slowly but surely into the lava pit. They're large creatures. They're very heavy. But between, like, three or four pretty badass warriors, it's not going to be a problem. The singular oh, cyclops, though, is huge. And I don't think the f- even if there were six of you working on this, you would be able to really roll that cyclops body into that. Um, what, if, what if we chopped it up? Yeah, I was about to say, I have a great axe to chop it if we could, but we could also maybe just throw it in the river. Um, I don't know what the gradient is. It's going to be harder, is. isn't it? Oh, Either way, like, like, it, it, moving it is going to be a problem. I don't remember exactly where it fell on this map. Was, I think yeah. it was lower I think it was down. it over here. Yeah. 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 Um, so maybe rolling it, you do have like the downhill section, but still, it, it's massive. You I'll could it hack it to pieces. Um, but that might take hours, and that would yeah, probably preclude a, a long, a short rest. You okay. know, it would have to go but leech just, into the night. One Cyclops well, well, body chilling is fine. Yeah, okay. and we could just put the tiny hut over here, like, away yeah. from it. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. My roll 20 is, like, lagging to fuck today. Mine was too. I had to reset my browser. It's super oh, lagging, yeah. Yeah, I would reset your browsers. Just reopen. Hmm. I don't know, though. DDoSing roll 20. So I was playing Kitan last night as well. That was lagging too. So I wonder if it's like a browser mm. thing. I noticed mm. Zoom was kind of laggy for me today earlier. So there's been like some internet weirdness. Mm. Um, but I set up no two worries. alarms. Uh, mm-hmm. One on the left and right hand side of the cage because it's a uh, cave because it's a 40 width entrance. Each one covers a 20 foot cube, which should cover the both sides of the entrance. Uh, the left. Hand one makes a slightly different noise to the right hand one, and then I begin setting up a tiny hut for the party to sleep in. However, everyone has to be in the tiny hut when it's finished casting, so I wait until yeah. the party is ready for me to do that. Okay. Throw the ogres in the lava. Uh, move this or leave the cyclops, and we set up the tiny hut outside of the cave. It is so. Uh, Droll Fraser settles in and begins tapping a little tune on his newly acquired uh, ogre teeth and starts humming himself to sleep. Bro, is it, you mind not humming? I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Cypher will oh. laugh at that request. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I I do it without thinking. And he continues humming. <laughs> Well, uh, Dwarf Razor will dream mm-hmm. of uh, what was it? Cy- Cyclops lever. Just oh, it's out there, man. I could go get it. Just the whole night he's thinking about it. It's right there. Right there. But if you leave, then we're all left out in the open. So you, you're the only one who can't go and get it. Maybe you the need only to convince thing... somebody to go and get it for you. It's the only thing holding them back. Yeah. Um, the night is not entirely quiet. You've set up these alarms with the express and purpose, uh, express intent and purpose of letting you know when something is going to step out of the cave. And the alarms will last for eight hours. And sure enough, maybe two or three hours into your, your sleeping, the alarm, one of the alarms begins to go. Uh, specifically, 
this is a mental alarm only for me. I wouldn't want to uh, interrupt the party's sleep uh, hmm. unless I saw something that was worth interrupting their sleep, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, you hear the alarm. How far back from the cave did you put the tiny hut? Because the cave uh, so is, this, like, right off the screen over here. Um, this would have been a discussion between the party. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would have, like, we would have talked, like, me and Cassian... Uh, it would have said, like, okay, I covered the front here in, like, uh, of the thingy. Uh, where do you want the tiny hut? He'd be like, I want it over here, or maybe I want it over here. So wherever we would have, like, agreed to have put it makes sense. I don't think Cassian knows too much about magic or even, I don't know, dragons or ever. So wherever you'd want to put it would be fine, as long as you're not, like, wanting to put it all the way over here. He wants to be able to, if someone comes out, to see them and see who's out of the cave. So I don't know, probably, like, 100 feet? Uh, so like maybe yeah, within the circle of pillar um circle of spikes yeah i think that's fine <laughs> yeah that's fine right there okay. yeah so then it's dark you are near this uh, pit that ends in lava but the lava isn't like m making you night blind or anything like that um and so you hear your or you're awoken by your alarm going off and you look towards the cave but it is nighttime. And what day of the week is it? Right. I do have it dim is... vision at night. What's the range of your night vision? Oh, shoot. That would have been a good thing to build it around. Uh, dark <laughs> vision, I could see up to 60 feet as if it were bright light, and in darkness as if it was dim light. You can't discern co uh, color in darkness, only shades of gray. Gotcha. So this is beyond the range of your infravision. It's just dark out there. Hmm. Can I even get like a, can I see even movement? Mm -mm. Um, who would I have been told to wake up if something set off the alarm? Probably me. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll wake up Cassian. What is it, Droll Uh Something set off the alarm. I'll get up, I'll look around. Do I see anything? Nope. Um, I will summon anything. I will summon my crow familiar and mm -hmm. send it to go look up in the sky if it can. Alright, let's take a look at your crow. It's, yeah, I, think, it's I think you give me a raven token. Raven. Does it have information? The crow? It does not. But it does have really good perception. It does have plus three on perception, but it cannot see in the dark. Sadly. Even, no one I feel has like much even line, looking, looking no. down from the sky, you get like a different angle. You'd see mm -hmm. something move in. Okay. There's, yeah, did you yeah, say there's no moon? Yeah. Uh, we are one week after the full moon, one week before the new moon. So a half moon. Um, yeah, I think if something big was moving, you might see it if you're a okay. raven flying above it. Okay. Raven takes off leaves the dome of force, flies near the entrance, um, and make me a perception check on the raven. Sure thing. Oh, well. Uh, yes. 16. From up there, the raven can see that there is indeed um, a singular ogre that is lying on its belly and very slowly crawling out of the cave at ground level, um, you know, just barely making movements. From your position here, like maybe you could have seen the thing, but it just looks like the rest of the broken terrain around you. Um, there wasn't really a, a good way to, to notice the ogre, but from up atop, you can see the, you know, the humanoid silhouette. Um. I'll describe the position of the ogre and what he's doing to Cassian, and I'll like try to point it out in the dark, like triangulating based on what I see through the raven and mm -hmm. what I see on the ground. It's like he's kind of he's over there somewhere and he's crawling. Does he look injured, like he had been in a fight earlier today? No. Is he crawling towards the? Uh, no, it's not me. But is he crawling towards the cyclops? I suppose. Same direction. Oh, okay. Just let him crawl for a bit. I whisper. Tell me uh, if he gets directly outside the tiny hut. I'll, I'll take care of him. Okay. And I'll let him go back to sleep while I keep watch. No, I'll, I'll stay awake. Okay. Yeah. 
it should only be like 10 minutes if he's crawling or something. Yeah, I will continue to observe him. Also keeping a lookout in case there's any more people crawling out of the cave. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the ogre gets to maybe 20, 30 feet outside of the cave, just a few ogre body lengths, actually, um, to a spot where it can, like, finally see the tiny hut is what it looks like it's doing. Um, I think it's invisible, though, right? No, it's no, not it looks invisible. like a dome. Yeah, mm. oh, I, I thought it was imp the spell imperceptible, yeah. or is it like the people inside I thought it can't was too. see? No, no the, it can have an opaque color on the outside, so you can't see in. But the dome itself is, in no way, shape, or form, um, less than visible. Uh, the dome is opaque from the outside of any color you choose. I would have picked like something close to the color of the ground, mm -hmm. but it, if they know the local area, they'd be like, "That's a really big boulder that wasn't there before." Yeah. Mm. And it's like a nice, smooth surface. It's not like a, a weird, rocky outcropping. Yeah. yeah. Um, in but the it future, gets... can we disguise our dome by putting like leaves and stuff on it? That's something question. to think about. They wouldn't. Those wouldn't be opaque, or sorry, those wouldn't be transparent. Leaves might stand out a bit hit round here, though. Depending sure. on the context and if you have time, yeah. I think Tiny Hut allows people to be inside when it's cast, walk out, and then like lean things against the Tiny Hut and then walk back mm -hmm. in. So I think you could probably make a a camouflage shelter. Um, Good enough for the future. Yeah. I think you just slightly run into issues where like if it takes you an hour and a half to camouflage your shelter and then you need eight hours of sleep, but now you only get seven or six and a half hours of sleep before the early. Yeah. Yeah, there <clears throat> you we might run into some some small problems there, but um anyway, it crawls out so it's you know feet are twenty feet from the cave, uh, it takes a look, and then it slowly turns around and begins to crawl back towards the cave. Um, I'm going to swoop down with my crow and try to shock and grasp him. Oh, wait, should I do that? Well, here's my question for you. Right now, you haven't cast any spells. You've just summoned your, your raven. I'm going to say if you start casting spells in the middle of your short rest, you will interrupt your short rest. I don't okay, know if that matters yeah. to you, though. If, if I'm getting a full rest, even though I've been woken up, uh, or if I'm getting a short rest, even though I've been woken up, I'll take that mm -hmm. short rest. Yeah. I was operating under the principle that being woken up would interrupt that. It's just a, a, a 10 minutes of being awake and, you know, bring your raven out of existence or into existence and then bring it back. Like, that's fine. Like, we all wake up for a few minutes in the middle of the night. No big deal. But if we're going to be casting spells or doing anything athletic, yeah. How far is the ogre uh, from the tiny hut? Does the old man, Steamer, have to wake up and pee like several times in the night? Um, roll? Yeah, okay. I'll roll a con check. Let's see if I can. Because I think actually he'd probably be quite excited about the idea of pissing into the like lava pit <laughs> over there. So let's see. Um, 12. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I wonder if, I mean, Cassian could make a dash and then just kill the ogre in one round before he gets back in the cave. If he wants to oh. forego his short rest. I'll let Cassian know that the ogre is crawling back. Let him go. Well, the night passes then, and morning comes. The tiny hut fails. The sun begins to rise in the east. The rays reach over the cave. Um, actually, they won't reach over the cave for many hours, and so you're left in this sort of like shadowed dawn as the, the sun goes up over the hills and the canyons and the walls and the, the cliffs of Voden. Um, it'll take maybe two or three hours before the sun is high enough in the sky that you'll actually see it based on your, your position to all these tall objects. So I think I get up relatively early. I go and piss in the in the lava pit. Um, was it cool? I'll start. Yeah, it was cool. Instantly vaporized. <laughs> the, but, the, the, the the vapor stank, though. Like horrendous. Yes. yes. Like, standing over that pit, there's already these, like, weird, sulfury, gassy things. Yeah. But the smell of vaporized urine is actually a quite specific... And uh, very unpleasant. I've peed Wait, enough yeah, campfires that... to let you know that you should not put out your campfire that way. It is not worth it. Go get some it's water. It's actually from the quite, quite disappointing, actually, I suppose. It probably vaporizes before it ever hits the surface of the lava, mm. I would imagine. 
It's probably pretty hot in there. Um, and, but then I'll, you know, I'll start making people food, I guess. In the morning. And uh, when Drollfraser Droll gets up, I'll say, uh, so the alarm didn't go off then. Oh, it went off. Uh, I woke Cassian. And uh, he decided I... that we should take no action. Not a very good alarm if I can sleep through it. Oh, the alarm is in my brain. <laughs> oh, really? You wouldn't want oh. me to wake everyone up, would you? I guess it depends. I suppose it wasn't a dragon then. No, 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 no. Much scarier than that. It was an ogre. Oh, there's one left? You should have just gone and killed it. Ogre. I've never seen an ogre sneak before. Well, no, me neither. I guess he's pretty worried, though, given what happened. Maybe it's one of the one. Did one of them get away? We didn't finish them off? Uh, I thought we caught all of them. I thought a couple of them ran into the cave. Yeah, maybe it was one of them, then. Well, is that the plan for today, I say, looking around? Maybe plan is to Mars? go into the cave and clear it out. I don't know if going into the cave helps us in our mission, but... The ogre was guarding, or the cyclops was probably guarding something. Had a horde. Whatever's yeah. in there could be useful towards our mission. I mean, I we have killed known... the cyclops. We might as well lose its lure. That's true. Um, I have known... Uh, I've heard tales of ogres and giants liking to collect coin. Do you need coin? You you live in extreme wealth. You you took over Cassius's wealth. You you're the arena masters. Yeah, I don't know about coin. that. I'm I'm going back more there. about uh, if there's items that could help us on our journey. It's just However, a practice, you know. You don't want to be killing the Cyclops and not losing them. It's a bad adventuring for. I think in a, if, if I found a Cyclops and he wasn't carrying his magic items, I think he was dumb. I mean, like, if I was a Cyclops and I found magic items, I would want those on me all the time because that would make me look so cool to other Cyclops. You and Cypher are against it. We could call a vote. I'm not against it. I just it. don't want us to don't. lose sight of the overall mission goal, but I think taking a peek can't hurt. Exactly. I'm not against the plan, I just don't think our reasons for going are convincing. <laughs> well, how about you, uh, Drolve Razor? Well, here's, here's yeah, the convincing uh, part, Drolve Razor. We'll go inside and you'll have another ogre to kill. Send to the mall. Um, okay, let's go. Good point. But also, the reason is curiosity. That's enough reason for me. Mm. Curiosity killed the lax slash Do you know what they are? It's a cat. Uh, it's like, it's a cat. <laughs> oh. Uh, My grandmother said it before she was eaten by a tiger. I don't know though. Your cats are pretty resilient. They don't go down easy. I, cats from where around I grew up feel like they outlive most of the people. Wow. Roll razor. Cats from where you live must be very fierce. How big are they? Yeah. Oh, you know, like cat size. Okay. Normal cat size. <laughs> In Drove Razor's word, world, cats are like tigers. So he's like, damn, that's a big cat. <laughs> <laughs> Drove Razor, are you able to send uh, your raven in? I can. He can't see in the dark, though. Um, so if there is something in there that can see in the dark, uh, that's minus one raven. And we and only let's have... Let's just go in ourselves. Not afraid. Should just be a few ogres. Hopefully I they can... surrender so we don't have to murder them. I give a look to the cleric. The man. What's a mat? The, uh, to uh, mat the healer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She, um, does she nod? Either. Does she not give a fuck? She, she's just keeping her jaw set here. You know, it's a dangerous mission. Violence happens. So she's a cleric of life. She's here to protect you. She's got to get to this temple. You guys are going there too. If this is what it takes to get there, let's just shut up and, and do our things and stay out of, uh, quiet and stay out of the way. Mott, how long does Bless last? And uh, maybe more importantly, Mott, can you cast light? Um, bless will last for a minute, and she can cast light. Fantastic. Let's. I, I throw a stone towards her. Before we cast light, um, Fear Fall Razor will. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, I get back uh, Arcane Recovery. If I get a short rest, I get a little. I get a spell back. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh. 
myself and Cypher, you can see in the dark as well, can't you? Yes. Uh, we can both see in the dark, so we don't necessarily have to cast light instantly. Well, whatever's we in that cave... lead you through the dark. Whatever's in them, if it's not got its own light, must surely be able to see in the dark as well. Roll of Razor, I've done this with humans before. They get very anxious when they can't see in the dark. Yes, I, I wonder why that could be. <laughs> Draw of Razor will sigh. Humans. I'll, Matt, I'll if... give Draw of Razor the look of like rolling his eyes like humans, right? Humans, am I right? You don't have to come in with us, Matt, but if you can cast light on a stone, that would be great. But maybe you'd be safer with us than us here. You would leave I think it's a bad decision to leave her outside. Yeah. Next to meat? This is clearly not his fight. Her. He's nervous. Or she's nervous. Oh, wait, it's Dude. a guy. Is it a guy? It's a guy, isn't it, Neil? Mott is female. Oh, sorry. Okay. She has, of this is our fight, and yet we are here. She has more of a reason to be nervous outside than she does inside with us. I agree. Think? I think the whole party should come with us. Mm. Okay. When we would tell campfire stories uh, in the winter solstice, uh, in the horror stories, when people split up, that's when they died. Then, Mart, hand me the stone. She hands you the stone. I throw it into the cave. Okay. I'll How leave. Far? You threw perfectly good light rock? Yeah. You chuck it into the cave. Yeah, I chuck it in. Like, I try and land it so that the light... Like, if I was to walk back up to the stone, I'd be in moderate lighting conditions the whole time. So you well, like the, the bright you light you like underhanded it. for 20 feet and dim light for 20 feet after that. So you want it 20 feet but inside the some, cave? or Well, there's some light coming in from the outside, sure. no? Okay. Yeah, yeah. so you chuck so, it in. All right, so it's 30 feet spot. beyond the edge of the light. Yeah. Probably good enough. There you go. All right. And our party enters the cave or walks up to the mouth of the cave. I enter. Uh, I'll be leading Cassian. We're gonna King. be down here. Do I still have my five uh, temporary HP, Neil, from Fighting Spirit? What? Probably not. Like I don't think it I think says it. Temporary HP disappears on a long rest. I think so too. Uh -huh. mm. Um, Neil, can us who have? Oh, sorry. I'm gonna be st I'm gonna be near Cassian, and I'm going to use my bonus action to activate my abjuration ward, uh, my arcane ward, which gives me twice your wizard level plus int, which is thirteen extra HP. To answer your question, Jan, I think you probably already see further than those of us without dark vision. It's probably built into the character token, I think, but maybe Neil can confirm. Uh, so our vision is already being shown. Let me double Neil? check your character sheets here. Cool. I want to just say that I will also be looking up. We're My vision, if it helps, ends about here. That's about what I can see. Fuck, your vision is way better than mine. Oh, I see what you're talking about, though. All right, so Cypher... Well, maybe I'm seeing too and... far. So. No, I there's see, a like, light stone. Right here. This is this is light stone. Oh, I see. It's shedding light. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have given both Cypher and Rawl Razor night vision, which is going to make the it look for the viewers um, really bright. But for the pl two of the players, it'll be a little bit dimmer. Oh, do we have Perfect. different visions on our thing? That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, he'd like to have uh, your token around. Dark vision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so given the... I'm weak here, so I'm not going to be in the front. I think I'm probably going to stay at the back with the other cleric. I'm in the front because I'm the greatest fighter of all time. Yeah, I think yeah. you three should this be at is, the front, and then I'll stay at the back with the rest. That's a great spot for us to stop, because coming from the darkness in your direction is a javelin, Cassian, when you get to about that spot. Um, fuckers. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually two javelins. Now, they're at long range, they're at disadvantage, but you can't see them coming, so the advantage and disadvantage cancel, and the pair of javelins go whoosh. One is yes. a nine, 
One is a seven. Terrible Man. shots. Uh, yeah, but we absolutely do need to roll for initiative at this point in time. Cypher will call out that there's projectiles. Thanks, Cypher. <laughs> is it me or is the font in roll 20 changed? It's different, yeah. Yeah. So Razor will ask what are projectiles. <laughs> Ours, um, javelins. Um, Cypher will say the, like, um, hobgoblin code word that we used in our arena battles <laughs> when there was, like, people with arrows or mages that were shooting shit. She says they're cheating weapons. <laughs> Flingers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we will be... I'm going to start carrying around a shield before combat, and then when we get into it, I'm just going to drop it. And then double hand my weapon. <laughs> it's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it actually is. <laughs> Free action to drop the shield? Bug action it. to take <laughs> off your shield. It's, oh, it's are there no ones that you wrist. can just hold? Oh, there's nope. strapped. Okay, okay. Never mind. Nope. Oh, they right. Like a little everything. baby, like one AC <laughs> buckler you could hold in one hand. Yeah. It's one extra AC, baby. Iron Grip the Jailer. Projectiles have been launched. It's dark in there. Uh, Iron Grip will yell, Cheaters! Using <laughs> ranged weapons! Uh, and he will take the dash action. Mm hmm. To move up to 60 uh, feet. And just absolutely storm into the cave, cave to that position right there. Thank you. Yelling, screaming about mm -hmm. cheat children of the maw who don't fight in melee mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mitts will dash to some cover um, and stand behind it the next ogre will grab one of his cheating projectiles and will hurl it um, at cypher's direction Whoosh. 11 is a miss uh Ethan will go and also dash to, well, just move to here and take a dodge action. Cassian takes a turn. I'll dash. I'm gonna dash up this way. Um, mm -hmm. Does it look like this is passable to my right, Koibu, or no? No, as you get there and you start to look in that area, it looks like it's maybe just a crevice. Maybe if you like pull yourself back there and squeeze, there might be a passage, but it, it looks really tight. I will uh, swap positions with Mitz if that's possible then. If I get to like um, here and then it looks tight, I should have like an extra 10 feet to swap with him or no? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Steer mirror. Yeah. I dash forward. Get him, steer mirror. Mm -hmm. All right, Cypher. Mute him. Yeah. Oh. So sorry. Let's also dash forward 60 feet right here. Nice. The arena That's buddies. Boy. All right. All right. Our next ogre will hurl a javelin in the direction of Steer Mirror. Uh, Whoosh. 21. Oh, Why me? <laughs> Wait, hang on. Have they got an angle on me? Because I'm trying to stand behind Troll Brace here. Wait, yeah, they do. They, they totally have an angle it, on you. Is it at negatives? Or sorry, is it at disadvantage because now we know the javelins are coming? Or is it? No, you still. Steermere still can't see him, but Steermere, it's it. coming actually from this angle. It is not from oh. in front of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah it comes from the side. The, I think this pole is like blocking me. Just roll yeah. the damage now. <laughs> 10 points of damage. That's not too bad. See, it's not me that is causing the rolls to hit you, right? It rolls. Four people were attacked and only you were hit. It's. It's not it's my a combination. Fault yeah, hang on. It's a combination of factors. Yes, I am unlucky, but also you want to hit me more. <laughs> I exert my will on the dice. We all know is... that intention matters, which is why we get to re-roll if you don't tell us what the right. roll's for or we, we, what we're looking for. Absolutely. Iron Grip, yeah. the Jailer. Uh, Iron Grip will yell to his allies, they're everywhere. And he's, he'll like flail his arms in the direction of the two ogres he can see. Um, mm -hmm. And then march. Doosh, 
uh, uh, forward to here. Mm-hmm. Wait, I forget what tile I did. I, okay, there. Right here? Yeah. Yes, now the ogre uh, comes into full view for you. You can see it. And he sees an ogre, and he will look at his list of spells and try to remember <laughs> what he was going to do. Uh, I Cassie, will... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, while well, you look, Cassie, you know, whisper to Mitz, um, Mitz, just guard that crevice here. Okay, sir. There, the crevasse. Feel it. Uh, I will shoot him. Uh, blindness at this guy. He has to succeed at a con check above a 14. Failure. He is now blind, this guy. Excellent. Oh, wait, he's out of range. Shit, it's 35 feet. You let me have that? Oh. Of course he won't. Of course huh. not. Are you kidding? The whole point <laughs> of feet is to measure the distance. No, wait, sir. Wait, using the cheating one. <laughs> Hold on. If this was a circle arc, I would have half range. If I hold down Alt, look. No, actually, not, not like even that. slightly, not buddy. Look at not, that. Hold down do alt, not pull I move one pixel. No, I'm not taking your Nick cheating measurement tools. Look, the arrow is inside this tile, nope. and it says less than thirty. You see, he's doing nope. it on purpose now. Doesn't fit. Yet. <laughs> do you have any other spell? Uh, I will just. I will. Yeah, be lucky that Neil doesn't take... just make you cast a spell and say, "Oh, it's hard range." You lose the spell slot. <laughs> I'll take the. I'll That's take the dodge. a great idea. Actually. Okay. Take the dodge. You dodge. Mitz will go check out this corner. Um, the next ogre will grab another one of the javelins from his pile I'm of javelins sure that he's leaving here <laughs> and hurl it right at Cipher. Oh. Eleven. You're more likely to hit if you throw it at me. Unfortunately. Miss. Wide uh, miss. Wide. In fact, it goes so wide that it hits me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ethan will. Oh, he wants to find some level of cover, but he needs to see things and he can't see anything. Um, Ethan will come to here and dodge. Yeah, because he still can't see stuff. Like, the viewers okay. and. Uh, Iron Grip can see stuff, but the rest of us, it's just dark in there. Can I have this, Neil? Um, can I run here? And as I'm running, can I grab the rock? Yeah, that seems fine. Okay. So you I'm gonna run up you? here, I'm gonna dash, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna grab the rock, and then I will um, have it be... Uh, I'm gonna just like throw it over here. That's fine. Uh, no, I think your free object interaction is to grab it. Perfect. Next round. I'll have it and I'll hold it. Yeah. Um, so weapon in one hand, which you can carry it in one hand, and rock yeah. in the other. If you can drop yep. it in your spot if you want, but to toss it would be like a... It's totally fine. Cool. Um, steer me. Here? Notice Wait, I hopefully am don't, behind cover. Uh, don't go uh, yet? Don't go yet. No. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Here it comes, Nick. He's going to do some wacky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Descending from the ceiling above you. Are you are absolutely joking. A growl. A growl. No, no, not one of these Drops fucking things again. From the ceiling. I can't remember. Oh my god! Oh, you give me a PTSD these. with this fucking thing. Here, just for those of you that need to see what a growl is, it's like a large brain with all sorts of droopy tentacly thingies and a large <sighs> beak, and it hovers and it can move silently from its hovering and it drops from the darkened ceiling above you and will multi-attack you once with its tentacles <laughs> with a critical hit. Um, and you will oh, take five bad. points of damage because okay. it rolled minimal. And you must succeed on a DC 11 constitution saving throw or be poisoned for one minute and paralyzed for as long as you're poisoned. Easy. And you're also grappled. Um, even if you pass your save. Even if I pass, okay. Yes, the target is grappled. Uh, if the target is medium or smaller, it is restrained until this grappled ends. While grappling the target, the Grail has advantage on attack rolls against it, and it can't use its uh, attacks against other targets, and it can move you as it moves. So now that it's critical due for five damage, um, it will make a beak attack with advantage against you. 18. 
<laughs> will rip you apart also for minimum damage. Nice. Okay. And it's on your square and it is your turn. Uh, I will use my last level one, my last spell slot, which is a level one spell slot to cast Thunder Wave. Sorry, did you um, not want to rebuke the damage? Can't you do uh, damage yeah, yeah. on a hit? Good point. I'll do that, Neil. In fact, I think I'll do that twice. I'll use does it take charges. your reaction uh, to rebuke? Maybe, maybe it does. Hang on. No. I'd assume it takes its reaction. Yes, yes, it does. So I'll do it once. So here you go. Thank you for reminding me, Moot. Uh, it's Evening just 2d8. Out. Three damage. And does it get a save? save? Yeah. Uh... Uh, failed saving throw, which... Save for half? Say. Yeah, but it doesn't say whether it's... Oh, deck save. Deck save for half. DC 15, I think. 14. Ayo. 15. All right. It'll take three damage. Okay. And then I cast Thunder Wave. Oh, these um, have no HP ever. Using my Channel Divinity, which I regain on a short rest. Mm-hmm. And you're casting it, like, above damage. you to hit the Grell. Now, you are restrained. Uh, grappled, um, you said. And restrained. Look at the texty text. Mm. Does that mean I can't cast? Uh, that's a question that I'm looking for right here. Um, restrained creature speed has become zero. Can't benefit from any bonus to speed. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. Its attack rolls have disadvantage. It has disadvantage on saving throws. Doesn't say anything about spell casting. Grappled... Um, do you have somatic and material components for the spell? I only verbal and somatic. I think that's fine then. If you had somatic and material, I would say that probably not. You couldn't cast it, but if it's just somatic and verbal, you've probably got one hand free that you can, yeah. you can gesticulate wildly well, with. on my head, isn't it, more than anything else? I mean, you know, it comes down, its tentacles wrap over your body, one goes around your torso, one wraps around your neck, one arm is caught, the beak is below above you and like tearing at your flesh. Um, I should yeah, probably do so, a better job anyway, describing these things in the future. I do 16 damage. It's a DC 15 con save for half. Which it, it does fails. not pass. And 16? Is, if you look at the spell description, it's knocked away 10 feet. Excellent. So you use 16 or 6? Six? 16. I'm, I'm pretty sure everything in this feet. cage just like perforated those eardrums too. Yeah, 300 foot mm -hmm. audible boom. Yeah, I think the forced movement will rip the grell off of you and it is pushed 10 feet away, so it is now uh, 15 feet in the air. What, he didn't okay. die? No. I and I, uh, I walk. Which way did he go? I was going Neil? to walk. Up. Oh, he went He's, up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because he descended, like, <laughs> grabbed him and then just got shoved back up. All right, that was Steermere's turn. Cypher. All right. <clears throat> um, Cypher will call out to um, Drellvrazer, the code word that they made up for, like, refocus or, like, change target. Okay. okay. So we'll, I should walk up to the tentacle guy. Which is 15 feet in the air. Ah, oh, fuck, you're right. Yeah, how are you going to... How are you going to get there? Can I? Does it float? It floats. Yeah. It just hovers there silently in the air. It's like little tentacles with sharp barbs at the end, just kind of waving like a, a sky jellyfish. Is jumping an action? Can he jump an attack? Make a jumping attack? Can he jump 10 feet up? That's the question. Hmm. You can attack something five feet above you. Can you jump? He's a couple feet of a run-up, too. Yeah. Let's just take a look at the 5e jumping. 5e jump. Movement. Jumping. High jump. You can jump a number of feet in the air equal to three plus your strength mod. I think your strength mod is three, so you could jump six feet into the air and then you're six feet tall or something. I think if you jump, you could make one set of attacks, but you wouldn't be able to use your bonus action to get an extra attack. All right, let's fucking do it. All right. Um. Get him. And as you're doing this, person with great dark vision, and your eyes, like, turn upward 
to notice the creature, oh, no. you can see oh, that this is bro. not the only Grell oh, shit. in the cave. Wait, what? Oh, fuck. We looked up at some point. How do we not see these things? They have high stealth. Well, stealth you have uh, low passive perceptions across the table. They are in dim lighting, actually very dark lighting. Um, yeah, they are, are not easy to see. Uh, I'm feeling a bit worried about right, the prospect. Where is Mott? Because at this point, I think someone would call out, like, Mott, cast light on the ceiling. Yeah, she's hanging back near the entrance. She's, like, way back at the entrance. Um, you all said to wait outside the cave if it seemed too sketchy for her. Um, but if you're going to call for Mott, I'll add her to the initiative order. Well, I think, actually, we it kind of agreed mean. that it everyone would... would come with. We did absolutely agree well, yeah. that Mott would come with, yeah. Okay. Well, on someone's term, uh, they can call out to her, but go ahead and make your attack, Cypher. 13. 13's a hit. Hey, uh, any, mm -hmm. any chance my thunder wave inadvertently hits any of the other ones? I checked. Okay. And second attack for 22, Neil. Excellent strike. Four. All right. Um, We're getting the weird damage rolls today. Next yeah. ogre. Uh, grabs a javelin and hurls it at uh, Iron Grip the Jailer. We're, we're better off like moving into the ogres, getting out of this room, so they're not above us. Mm. The ogre will step five feet closer, so he's not at disadvantage, and throws a javelin. Sixteen is a miss. Oof, nice. And then we'll step uh, a few feet back. The next uh. grell will drop down on Cypher uh, and take its multi-attack. Tentacles at Cypher, nine is a miss. Yep. And then Beak at Cypher is a oh, indeed no. a critical oh. hit for 11 Jeez. points of damage. Don't do bad. Um, the next Grell, why? Steermere, <laughs> <laughs> buddy. Thank you for coming right, within you range. Miss. You're going to miss, um, it's fine. But I think by now you might have been alerted because the light range is pretty good. And now that you're looking up for these things, the thing comes out of the yeah. shadows and you no longer has advantage on its attacks against you. It's another critical hit on Jesus. Steermare as the tentacles the bad one too. wrap yeah. around you for 16 points of damage, rendering you I'm down, I'm down. unconscious. I'm and it grabs you and its tentacles. I got you, Nick. And it will beak you as well. Yeah. Which is an automatic crit and an automatic failed two death saving throws for you. Um, what the fuck? Yes. Jesus. The damage doesn't matter. It can't kill you with its damage, even if it were to do all, all maxes. Um, yeah. Two failed death saves. It's a beautiful well, day. Well, hopefully, Mats can help me. I hope so. On their initiative, which is 17, um, I think, so. Yeah, somehow they're not on the list. So let's put her in. 17. Excellent. Um, uh, would I know that Matt has a ranged heal? I don't know if she does have a Yes, ranged heal. maybe. We would have definitely it's... talked about this. We would have 100%. Our characters would have 100% during our like, strategy meetings talked about what kind of heals she has available. No? I think All so. Right. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard any of you say such things, but. Uh, if that is something that you would have strategy and meetings and whatnot, they have. All right, all right. If that is something you would have discussed, she does have a heal with a range of sixty feet for one d four plus spellcasting modifier. Okay, so if Iron, Iron Grip knows she has a ranged heal, uh, and he would assume that she would uh, use that to bring back up Stereo. I am going. Can to she get in who... range? Uh. I'd be shocked if she couldn't, because she should have been in the cage with us. Okay, she okay. should have been. Okay. Um, oh, Iron Grip, I have these. Okay, uh, I will Magic Missile this one at level three. The one that is beside Cypher. Uh, the Grell next to Cypher? Yeah. Correct. All right. 3d4 plus three for damage, and take away a spell slot. at level three. Uh, three, four, five, d4 plus five. Five. Uh, 17 damage. Nice. Ripping this guy to shreds. Not quite killing, but badly damaging it. Oh, come on. Um, and I will move one, two, three. 
Uh, let me do the measurement. I'll move back towards the party, I guess, to protect mm -hmm. slightly. I'll cover Sturmer's body so I can be ready to help him. I'll move to about here, if that's fine. Perfect. All right. Mitz has got that crevice covered. Uh, oh. And Mott is going to come on out. Um, eh, I can't quite make that, but you can do this. She will come to here, uh, just coming around the corner. Oof. <laughs> just a is he in range? Oh, he's yes. barely in range. Um, and she will use her last first level spell slot to healing word you. So it does not seem to want to roll. Um, remind me though, you're saying that I still have two failed death saves, right? Yes. We're yes. doing that until the next long rest. You have two failed death saves. So I'm Can likely you... to die if the Growl attacks me again. And presumably the Growl is still on me, Neil, or is it let go? You are still grappled by the Growl. I don't know why it's the not growl putting it into chat, but you're getting 1d4, 1D4 plus... 1d4 plus your spellcasting um, ability modifier. Right. Three plus... She also has Disciple of Life. Um... Her hit points, the creature gains additional hit points to two plus the spell's level, so plus another three. So you will get seven. Plus six. Yeah. Plus six. <laughs> All right, and that is her last first level spell slot. Um, the next ogre goes, and it will. Hmm. Cypher can't quite see it, so when it throws its javelin at Cypher, it is not at disadvantage. Uh, 19 will hit Cypher in the back for 14 points of damage. It's a beautiful shot by the ogre. The crowd goes wild. Uh, Ethan turns his bow towards the wounded Grell and will attempt to finish it off with a nine is a miss, leaving the next Grell to go, who um, Ethan should have moved because this guy is going to descend. Um, yeah, he still has enough movement to get near Ethan, tentacle him. 17 will hit for four points of damage. Grapple attack at advantage with the beak. Eight is actually a miss. And Ethan is grappled and restrained. Uh, all right, Cassian Rin. The hero, okay. Do you see my movement? No. Save me, Cassian. Okay, can you look? I see it, yeah. The blue? Okay. So I go here first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attack with advantage. You correct? dropped your lightstone, right? Yeah, lightstone okay. is there. Attacking with advantage. Um, Actually, the grill is in the air, so you do not. You're not on. Well, you're not the grill is on. Oh, it's on my head. No, it's I'm on, on the head. ground. He's on the ground. Sure, sure, but, like, to flank, you have to have people on opposite sides, and you're both, like, you're not. T yeah, but if three it's on me and I'm like, flank. no, no, I'm fine with it, that. Wait, hang on. If it's on me and I'm lying down, there's no way it's like higher than like ten foot in the air. Well, it comes down, it grabs you, and yeah. you fall unconscious, and it doesn't drop um, to the ground with you. So you're just sort of like hanging in the air uh, as it's holding okay. on to you. Sure, um, okay. But That's you fine. need like opposite sides, and there's there someone would have to be floating in the sky at that point. Great weapon mastery coming up with a normal attack then. <sighs> oh, miss. Here's my, uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be my second attack. Can you give yourself advantage? 20. No, there you have go. It anymore. For 21? Uh, oh, that is about half its HP, not quite, in one blow. <clears throat> okay, then we are going to, uh, action surge here. Mm hmm. Here's another great weapon master. 21. Whoosh. Oh, no, sorry, a six. Wild miss. And my last one then. 13. Oh, you just barely Thanks. got him. Need a better roll this time. 21. Shit. More, more than half dead. The next Grell goes. Um, this one will fail its check because I'm reading the numbers correctly. And it will ascend into the sky and get to the top of the cave, hiding in the shadows. I don't think anyone... Yeah, it's like... Yeah, I think it's outside of everyone's range uh, vision at this point. Steermere, you are conscious, but you have two failed death saving throws and you're grappled by a Grell who is about to go very soon. Yeah, so I will try and escape the grapple. Do I, does it take my actions to do that or do I get a free chance to escape? Most things it in Tim Edition, your I think action, you get a but You sure? It doesn't say that. No, yeah, yeah, a gra escapes are actions. Um, okay. But unfortunately, 
you are poisoned. And as long as you are poisoned, you are par- Actually, you never rolled your DC 11 con save. You need okay. to do that from last time because you might be, yes, you are poisoned and paralyzed and there's nothing you can do other than look at horror okay. as your life fades. Uh, Cypher Quicklaw, almost dead as well. All right. Um, should probably try to attack. How far is this? Okay. Are you grappled or no? He's not grappled, but you would. I think you'd take an opportunity attack, would you? Or is he yes. 10 feet in the air? No, he's within combat range. If Cypher moves away from the Grell, Cypher provokes an attack of opportunity. Hold on. Is that Grell that's low HP over there? Which one is that in initiative order? If you hover over the turn order, you can see they get a yellow box around them. That one will definitely... If you don't kill it, it's... I'm dead. I'm pretty certain. Maybe not. Maybe not. If you take an opportunity attack, you could be dead and poisoned too. Yep. Yes. I am not going to die. Yeah. Um, so I will risk it. Based. Um, Cypher will try to move over here and provoke the attack of opportunity. The tentacles lash out. They grapple around you, but not yes, good fast. enough. Cypher's too fast. I move and I slash at this thing once. Seven oh, critical miss. miss. He fucking rolls one. Jeez. 18 okay. though. Hit! But can you kill it? Not Seven. quite. All right. Yeah. Guess I'm Off not hand. second winding. Critical oh, hit. Yes. The longsword comes through. It severs some of all of the tentacles. What does it do? Roll me the damage. Let me see um, the damage. Oh wait, it's it's like 3d8, right? For my crit. Should be able to click yeah. it now. Yeah, just click the oh, button. Is that just gonna work? The, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. If it doesn't, we'll fix it. But yeah, throw another D8 in there. But otherwise, it's it's right. It. Fuck, no, that's the sorry. wrong fucking button. Oh my I god. Fuck, I fucked it You want to click <laughs> the, the text of the one know, that is a critical roll. Roll so the 3D8 plus, plus 6, right? Yeah, yeah. Plus 3? Uh, plus 3D8. Three. Three plus 3, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Boom. 13 Good. is enough. You sever the tentacles, the spear drives into the Grell brain, and the Grell falls to the ground. Does it have ears? Like, yeah. It has no ears. It's it's just like a brain creature. Look at this thing. Yeah. Um, as Cypher pulls out her sword, she will just whisper something to herself, I guess. Hey, uh... Uses wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Do I get to roll save every round against the poison? Uh, yes, on your fail, on the round that you didn't do anything, you should have made a save at the end yeah, of your turn. Yeah, so I should make another save just now. Yes, yeah, so. yes, thank you. Okay. Which I passed. All right, so, so no you are paralyzed. no longer paralyzed. Thank you, uh, Cypher. No longer grappled or restrained. Excellent. We need to retreat. The egg is about to kill me with the javelin, though, sadly, so <laughs> there is that. <laughs> well, if you're lying down, you have cover, right? I'm not lying down, though. I was being carried up. I probably, like... I think you just on landed on your feet. Yeah, the ogre yeah, yeah. throws a javelin right for you. <laughs> Whoosh! It you're hits you. A, you're such Hold a on, fucking you, bellend. Little, little damage. It's 15 damage. It gets you good. <laughs> I actually just can't. He's not off. dead yet, though, right? Because he doesn't have to do a save. No, no, no I'm not. I'm not saved yet. So yeah. Okay. But I'm one. I'm one. Ten or I'm, I'm nine or lower from dead. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, next up is one of the Grell. Uh, this is the one that was fighting Cypher, and it will sort of float, bloop, 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 just kind of quietly through the air, like it's not even there. And it will wrap its tentacles around you once more, Cypher. 17 will hit you. You will take just the four, ignore the nine, damage, oh, and make okay. me nice. a DC 11 constitution saving throw, that? or be poisoned. DC 11. Oh, you pass. You're That's fine. Nice. But you are grappled by the creature. And so the Grell will bring its beak to bear against your flesh. With the 16, it just barely grabs you and it will do nine damage, which brings you to below zero. However, tell the kids at home what you have in store for the Grell. You're muted. You're muted. 
great setup. I have Completely relentless endurance, uh, which means when I get reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, I get to drop to one hit point instead. Yes, and so you are dropped to one hit point. Um, you are grappled and restrained, um, but otherwise, as you know, happens, call out. As this happens and uh, her relentless endurance triggers, I'm imagining the way that this happens for Cypher is she's just so engaged and so um, caught up in the fire and the spectacle of this beautiful fight. She smiles, she laughs, <laughs> and uh, leans into the beak and smiles at the beast and uh, shows her little orcish fangs a little bit. Iron Grip, help steer me up and take him out. Um, yes, yeah, so if I wanted to carry Steamer out, is that an action for me to pick him up? Please, yeah, I please think stabilize him me. Up yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> an action. Please stabilize okay. me instead oh, of picking well, me up. No, no, uh, stabilizing. So what is that, an int check? It's a DC 10 medicine check. Ooh, okay, I do have good int, which I think is medicine. I think it is too. It is. I uh, know, it's wisdom. I lied. Oh, you're you're getting a raw dice here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Wait, I've plus three. I, I'm skilled in medicine. That's nice. fighting in the arena, baby. Boom! Yeah! Nice. Okay, not dying. Yeah. For now. Could that yeah. be like him critting on a death save? He comes back with one HP. I'm nice. checking that. I don't think there's any twenties on a medicine check. No. Damn. Um, but with my remaining movement slash bonus action slash whatever I can do, I just mm -hmm. like scoop them up underneath my arm, my free arm. He's an item right now. He's just a. You, you know. do get one free item interaction. I don't. I think a person might be a little bit bigger, but you have a bonus action in there. So yeah, with your bonus action, I think you can scoop him up in your arms and carry him like a, a bride across the threshold. Maybe at half far, speed, probably. How far can I move him? Like there? Probably, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll take that. Okay. Uh, Mitz is going to come out and will run as fast as they can to this Grell, but can't actually uh, fight them this round. Mott will take a look at her available spells. Also her channel divinity. Would be of particular use here. Um, yes, her channel divinity is pretty bomb, but she has to get close enough to everything to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and her spells. Okay. Yeah, so she will move. Oh, she'll put herself in um, horrible, horrible danger. I'll get Based. right here. True Martha Claire. Nice. Okay. Um, Channel Divinity is restored number of hit points equal to five times her cleric level. She is third level, so that would be 15 HP. Um, so I think instead she's going to do Prayer of Healing. Oh, no, it's a 10 minute casting time. I take it back. Uh, oh, she's shit. definitely going to be doing her Channel Divinity. Um, job. So we nope. can share the HP out between us, I think. Or she can she can choose. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong one. Channel of Divinity. Choose any creature within 30 feet of you. Divide the HP among them. No more than half their HP. So uh, she's gonna give 15 to Steermere and 15 to Cipher. She no, no. both. Wait, no, it's one. 15 total. Ah, yeah. She will do seven to Cipher, eight to Steermere. Okay, cool. wonderful. Exactly back enough up. to die to a javelin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cypher will look almost disappointed. Oh my gosh. The ogre's gonna javelin me again, isn't it? No, the ogre throws a javelin at Mott. Whoosh! 19. Oh, no. Seven piercing damage. Bring this her to... Okay. She's fine. It's not too much. Ethan! Um, Ethan is... Restrained. Grappled. grappled. Did he pass his poison check? I forgot to make his poison check last time. Uh, he is 
not poisoned, so he can still act. Dropping his bow, he will draw his short sword and make an attack at disadvantage against the Grell. 14 is a hit. It's... He will do four points of damage to the creature and cry out, help me! Someone help me! Five, uh, four the... instead of five? Did I say four damage? Yeah. Yes. Then I'm just dumb. Uh, it is absolutely five. Yeah, I even subtracted four. That's weird. Um, the Grell will just dash up, bringing Ethan 60 feet into the sky with him. Uh, I mean, the Grell is now 70 feet in the air and is lost to vision. You can't see the Grell. No one can see the Grell anymore. But you can like barely Ethan. see Ethan up in the shadows of the cave above you, his, like, legs dangling below as he cries out. Cassian. I'll move here. Uh, great Weapon Master. Miss. Hit. 18. Oof. Right. Um, okay. Steermere's turn. How high up is Ethan? Ethan is 60 feet in the air. What? 60 feet? Yeah, yeah. it moved and dashed and it hauled him with baby. it. How high is the Grell? Like it's 60 feet him. as well. Wait, it can just carry him like it's nothing? Yes, yes. The Grell movement specifically states that um, when the Grell moves, if it has a medium or smaller creature held or grappled, that creature just moves with it. So, no problems here. Jesus. Yes. Thank Fuck. God you're in a cave and not outside where it could just go 300 feet in the air and drop you. Um, so it's more than 60 feet away. Yes, it is more than 60 feet, and Ethan is below it. <clears throat> um, I cast Sacred Flame on, on the Growl that is fighting Cassian. Excellent. Dex check. Yep. Pass. Uh, does he take no damage? Yes. It's a yeah. cantrip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cypher yeah. quick claw. Wait, wait, wait. Movement, though. Movement. Oh, yeah. You've been carried. Yeah, well, you know, I stopped being carried. Cypher. Yeah. Which, which one is, is the only grail left is the one 60 feet in the air? My no, there's right. this one right next to you. Oh, yeah. Fuck that they guy. Get grappled by, I think. Yeah, okay, yes. so I'm grappled. So how do I attack something when I'm grappled by it? You're grappled and restrained, so you have disadvantage on your attacks, but you can still make them. Cool. And there's no way to, like, attempt to free myself? It would be your action, and it's a DC 15 athletics or acrobatics check. That's not that likely, is it? You probably have good one of them, at least. Yeah. This thing has a lot of HP left. Making like two attacks at this disadvantage kind of sucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to free myself um, with a. Because otherwise, you're about to get dragged up into the air like Ethan, anyway. Yep. Athletics check. Fuck. Miss. Okay. Um, All right. It's your turn. Can I, can I second wind? Yes. Uh, it was a, the hut was a short rest, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is there a button for it? Am I stupid? E10 plus uh, five. There's your button. You healed 12. Very good. Um, this ogre grabs a javelin. It hurries forward. You're restrained. Oh, Wait, actually, sorry. Wait, maybe, maybe it can get, yeah? Can I action search to try to free myself again? Yes. Okay. I'll do it. I don't know if this is smart. I should do it. Fuck it. I think it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is action surge not a bonus action, though? No. Oh, uh, true. So I would either have it's to. It's not a bonus action. Do that it's or not a bonus right? No, you oh, can no. do both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're good. Perfect. All right, athletics. <sighs> Fuck. Nope. That nope. Sucks, nope. Man. In fact, I think your athletics checks is at disadvantage because when you're restrained, you have disadvantage uh, yeah. on. That's so stupid. I, I hate so. restrain in second edition. I hate restrain in fifth edition. It's the dumbest shit. Ah, yes. Holding your enemies down. Barbarians are actually oh, so it's... obnoxious because they can give them, when they rage, they get advantage on athletics checks. Yeah. So if they're holding you, they're, you're at disadvantage. Yeah, they're they at advantage, advantage and they've probably got more strength than you. It's yeah. extremely obnoxious. You don't actually have disadvantage. You only have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws when you're restrained. 
doesn't. Still, um, the ogre will. He was gonna. He can't actually get within short range of you, so he will just grab himself a uh, javelin, move forward How many a little javelins bit. Javelins have they got now? I mean, really? They've got a, a pile of. Well, you can't quite see them since you've never gotten They've close got enough, but. This is a cave in which they are defending, and they know that you're outside and you're going to come in in the morning, so they've carefully placed a pile of javelins on the ground where they can stand and throw them at you, and they haven't really moved from that spot the whole time. I'm not time. questioning the fact that it's in a pile. I'm questioning that they've got that many in the first place. Well, there were a lot of ogres, and now there aren't very many, so they've got like yeah. 20 or 10 ogres worth of javelins to sit around. Mm. And they'll throw another one at uh, Cypher. Hit me. Yeah, Miss. get the fuck out of here. Um, the grail that is holding Cypher begins to <laughs> okay, ascend like, hold on. to the sky. Is it, opportunity. Attack of opportunity. I, just, opportunity. I, I, I'd also like yes. to say, if he's throwing a javelin at me and I'm grappled, is there not a chance that he hits the grill? Technically, no. Okay. In second edition, yes. In fifth edition, no. I Wild miss. Me. Mate, why is Karen all with your rolls today? today. <laughs> Cypher, you are now 60 feet in the air. I imagine not happily as the Grell uses its movement so it can't make any attacks against you to lift you into the air. You know, it dashes upward, dragging no, you with it. This is a roller coaster ride. She's excited. All right. <laughs> Iron um, I, will, together. I will use my action to summon my raven. Yes. Uh, ah! I'm going to have to drag the token. Ah! And then the raven, I guess, rolls initiative? Yes. There's raven initiative. Which is you got right so after lucky, you. But you could have got so fucked, and I think it is so stupid that you can roll like a 20 if you have like a 19, and then the raven will have to go on the next turn. I just want to mm. put my displeasure with mm. that. Um, yes. So... Okay. Uh, I am going to stay where I am. Cool. Your raven goes. Yeah. My raven is going to fly up. Sorry, uh, Ethan. Uh, Cypher's more important. <laughs> <laughs> the raven will fly up to Cypher uh, and use the help action on Cypher to give him advantage on his next skill check. Excellent. Uh, Mitz looks around. He can't get to any of the Grell. He'll do what minions do, and he will get closer to the ogre. <laughs> you are so stupid, Mitz. One... <laughs> Mitz is one dumb motherfucker. He really is. <laughs> Can I just say, I called for a full retreat, Koibu, and Mitz, I guess, goes towards the ogre? Um, yeah. Okay. You know, no one ever criticized, uh, no one hey, ever thought that minions were the smartest creatures in the world. Uh, Mott. What can we do, Mott? How Mott can we just help? Got smacked with a javelin. Yes, she did. Um, any creature within range, but only 30 feet. Range 60 feet, a creature of your choice. Um, Mott is going to cast Shield of Faith, but she's gonna have to get closer on Cypher. Uh, she's gonna move essentially to underneath Cypher and will cast Shield of Faith at second level. So, Cypher, nice. you have plus two to your AC for the duration. What does casting it at second level do? Literally nothing. It's just shielding has second she level spell slots. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Um, so, your AC is temporarily 18, Cypher. Uh, Damn, thanks. The next ogre will move here and throw a javelin at Cassian. Whap! Hit. And hit you, and then go back to grab another one. Ethan has passed his save and will make attacks. No, wait, should not Ethan should Ethan not try and break out of the grapple? Yeah, I think Ethan at this point would definitely be breaking out of the grapple. 60 foot decks, fall? So. I mean it's gonna be a 60 I mean, foot fall even if he kills him, right? Yeah. 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 The grapple uh, isn't wounded either. That's true. No right. He would yeah, he would Acrobatics try check to escape. DC fifteen. And yeah, it's a nice. pass. Get it. Ethan Get it, falls Ethan. and takes Monster, man, doing 66 damage. damage. <laughs> uh, would you roll it, Mr. Mooten? How much do you want? 66. 66. Does he not have any sort of like way to <laughs> resist uh, falling damage as a rogue? Nope. He's not that high level. 
Yep. Oh, he's alive though. Okay. That fourth level rogues don't get that. I, I mean, that's... I don't know. I'm just, I, I actually don't know if it exists or something. I'm just assuming that rogues might have something like that. Mm, pretty sure they have something like that. They do. It's called Uncanny Dodge, and they get it at fifth level. Okay. Should have leveled up. And it's when an enemy hits you with an attack. Ugh, poor Ethan. Anyway, he escapes. He falls. Ah! Um, he takes half his movement to stand up, and then he uses half his movement to run. Do you not uh, get a free dash as well as a rogue? Yes, you can bonus action dash. Well done, Nick. You should just play all the NPCs. <laughs> um, uh, next up is shot. the Grell that was <laughs> holding on ass, to man. Ethan. <laughs> Um, oh and no, I didn't say that. No, I was it joking. will drop 60 feet. So now it is just above the hobgoblin. Um, in, in the square directly above you, but it had to use all of its movement to get down there. So if you move, hobgoblin, you're provoking the attack of opportunity. Cassian. I yell out, Mitz, don't, don't, don't lose your life. <laughs> and I will go over here, um, and I will attack the Grell. And I'm going to hit both of these, I think, this time. So here you go. Great weapon mastery. For four Whoa. and an eight. What? What are you That's doing? Whoa. I just can't roll today. There's no dice for this man. Uh, yeah, it's my turn, is it? Dear Mayor. Um, I do... Where's the other Grell? Is this the last one now? No, there's one up in there, but... Who could tell? There's one that there's so has many. Cypher. The one that has Cypher. Like, Cypher's still currently being growled. Oh, yeah. Yes. Cypher's 60 feet in the air. Okay. Uh, he's too far away from me, so I Sacred Flame the, the one that's on the ground near me. Uh, five. PC. They fail. Uh, they will take five points of damage. Take any extra damage? Uh, I... No. Move back. I stand to feet. do extra though. Like a brain freeze. That's <laughs> hyper. You're True. 60 feet in the air. Oh god, it's terrible. If you fall, the last person that fell took 23 damage. It might knock you unconscious. What are you gonna do? It can also just start eating your face out with advantage on all the attacks. What are you going to do, Cypher? I mean, what the fuck is even my best outcome here? I kill it, I also fall 60 feet. I, yeah, and you've got like, advantage on the escape because of the raven helping you as well. That's I true. Mean, that's Close cool, and then I fall and I die. Maybe you could roll poorly. It'd be yeah, great. What is, the, what is the roll on falling? 66. 66. Average outcome of 66 is what? Uh, 3.5 times 6 is... 20. 20 or 21. 21. Oh, you got a 50-50 Matt will have a go, and we'll be able to hopefully bring you back up, so... Yeah, Matt's right there. Yeah. Um, Give advantage on it. <clears throat> Does it, like, even out with the disadvantage because I'm grappled, or...? You don't even have disadvantage. I was just full of shit last time. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Acrobatics well, or athletics. Athletics check. 15 is the number you need. There you go. Yes, you break free of the Grelly grip. You plummet to the ground. And um, Iron you Grip, would you player. roll? Wait, okay, wait. I'll roll. If Let the, me roll it. I want to kill wait, a player. Wait, wait, wait. I want to kill wait, a player. Wait, 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 wait. If the ground moved up 60 feet, but he's like six foot tall, maybe he's only actually falling 50 feet. The Grell wasn't at ground level, right? The Grell, the Grell moved 60 feet up and Cypher moved 60 feet up. Right, they move yeah. in tandem. The Grell yeah, yeah. should never attack. They should just grab people and then dash up. It's mm. the genius move. Mm. We need to tame these growl. Yeah. <laughs> like, bring them to side. 19 yes. points of damage as you uh, hit the let's ground. Go. Um, you still <clears> have your movement. Yeah, on your bonus action. Okay. Run, uh, Cypher. What do you I say? I will call out. Run, Cypher. Fuck Get you. behind me, Doctor. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, what's the situation? Um, you have them outnumbered. The the Z axis is adding a lot of weird shit here. Yes. Yeah. Um. So wait, this guy, this guy, he's on the ground chilling. Yep. Okay. He's uh, in. He's hittable. 
this Grell, yeah, is 10 feet in the air. You can hit 10 feet in the air. He's gonna kill me if I go there, I think, unless we all kill him. Inside. I'm gonna grapple this fucking Grell to the ground. I'm gonna teach you a lesson. Can I I'm flank him? him? No. Mm -mm. You need to flank across X, Y, and Z. I'm one HP. This run, dude, don't risk it. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck it up. So, technically, this means a Grell can never flank you if he's above you, because on the other side of you is always the ground. Yes. Okay. Just want us to remember that rule later. <laughs> okay, let's get back. <laughs> um, I'll also tell the group to get disengaged and I'll dash 60 feet down here. The ogre. Ah, oh, he left his pile of... of javelins to come to that Keep spot earlier and the enemy's fleeing so what is the ogre gonna do the ogre is just gonna come in and dash and run thump 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 fee fi fo thump and brings himself with his club right into the middle He's that way dash, yeah. he can get oh, wait did mitz not get a sneaky attack as he comes around the corner no unfortunately sure he yeah i think the path that the ogre He's took too big. He's too big. yeah um, this way, no matter who moves away from the ogre, the ogre gets attack of opportunity. No one's going to move away. This ogre's going to die. No, it's yeah. a brilliant move. The enemy's fleeing. The ogre's got it. I have to get to this <clears throat> grell. Thank you, Mitt. Uh, Th Mott. This move is the only way the ogre can die in this fight. Just yeah. wanted to know that. He's an ogre, Nick. Yeah, he's not smart. He's not known well, for his intelligence. The grell here drops down right above Mott. Not far Whoa, enough, Mott. with not enough actions to grab Mott, but is now oh, just okay. hovering above Mott because it has to move and dash. Uh, okay. Iron grip the jailer. Uh, I'm going to step one tile northeast. Mm -hmm. um, am I, would I still be in range to attack this guy with a shocking grasp? Because um, if shocking... not, I'll a shocking grasp, then move. Shocking grasp is touch. So the reason that you can easily hit things 10 feet in the air is because you've got like, you know, four or five foot blades on your hands. And so you can swipe at those things. But to actually touch something 10 feet in the air would require a jump. Um, so I think you could make the shocking grasp if you were directly below it. And it would take like, you know, five feet of movement to do so. Because you have to jump up and touch it. All right, let's do it. I'm jumping. I'm touching. Uh... Skadoosh. I shock and grasp him. Uh, make spell me... save 14. No, make me uh, oh, wait, a, a touch attack. attack. Yeah, a melee spell attack. Listen, I'm rolling big here, okay? 10. Whoosh. That's a miss. You go to high five the Grell's uh, dangerous tentacles and miss them. Uh, and then that takes five feet of your movement because you're jumping, and then you can do whatever you want with the rest of your movement. Ugh. Oh, miss from behind. <laughs> um... I will move one tile here. Okay. The raven goes. The raven will swoop down Ooh. and land right here. The raven can get flanking, right? That's right. Against yeah. the growls. Yeah. I suppose. Oh. Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah, yeah, actually, the, the raven... Yeah. <laughs> the raven swoops down exactly 10 feet into the air diagonally to this ground. You are one genius, Iron All Star. right. <laughs> Mitz runs across the battlefield. Let's go. Up behind the ogre. <laughs> Advantage. <laughs> With Wait, a 20. Oh, yeah, okay. Smashes seven. the ogre in the back of the knee for seven points of damage. The ogre reels. Mott will uh, disengage and move away because she Mitch is, is a legend, uh, man. Yeah. In fact, oh no, she, that's as far as she can go. The ogre, the other ogre goes. Um, ra still in javelin area, will pick up a javelin and hurl it at Mott. Wah! 11 will hit her yeah. for it's 11 advantage. points of damage. Disadvantage? disadvantage? Um, and plus advantage because it's uh, invisible to oh, her. Oh, come on. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they cancel. Okay. I mean, we've yep. been seeing javelins come from the exact same spot all fight. Yeah, but it's still, like, you might know that okay. there's a monster there, but you can't see it, like, aiming at you. If, you. if you can't see the creature, it has advantage. Yeah, you don't know when it's coming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Ethan. I, I mean, the, the, the rule is that you can cast spells when restrained, but that maybe doesn't make sense, so we might flex that one. Yeah, well, you we, you did cast spells while restrained. Yeah, because it wasn't yeah. zero. No, it, wor yeah. it works perfectly. Okay. Um, Ethan 
does he pass his morale check? He does! He will take his bow back. Oh, no, he dropped his bow on the ground. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, nope, Ethan's out. He leaves the cave. He's gone. Uh, Grell. Oof. Who do we want? You know, we want Cassian. The tentacles well, Cassian. What about the fucking bird? No. The yeah, tentacles, okay. whoosh. They try to Man. wrap around you. They cannot do it. It lowers itself just enough to slam its beak into you. Oh, it's also nice. a miss. <laughs> uh, this has been a spicy battle. Oh, yes. I'm attacking the ogre here. Yes, I'm attacking the ogre. Get that kill. I have advantage. advantage. 20. To hit. 24. Half the ogre's nice. HP. Okay. One I shot. Attack it again. Critical. Nice. Oh. There we go. There we go. With the extra dead. 28 right. is exactly yeah. its remaining HP. The I get ogre an extra attack. Crumbles. With Bonus advantage action. on the growl. Yes. It's a hit. Well, oh, it's a hit. Exactly. Nice. 25. Oh. Ha more Literally, than half its what HP. Is what is that? They're going down left and right <clears throat> and Cassian everywhere. Goes with his axe, he gets the ogre in the shoulder. He pulls it out, lops the ogre's head off, and then does a quick 360 turn right back where he was facing and upper hands the grow with the axe from the underside. Tentacles go, brain splits open, weird pale yellow juices drip out onto the square next to you as the Grell's beak opens and goes, Oh! Steer mirror. Um, I consider giving my greater healing potion to Cypher to help him get back in the fight, but with that huge attack and the slaying Cypher of the ogre. Cypher will, seeing this, also yell out in excitement as this happens. Yeah, I Here think now. In the crowd at the ogre. Yeah. We've got the fight in the bag, so I'm worried more about Matt's getting killed by the Grell on its turn, or by the Ogre. Um, when is Matt's turn? Not for a while. Not for a while. <sighs> Shit, do I? Take your potion and cover it. I go here, and I take the dodge action. Okay. Greedy. I like it. Cypher, one HP. Just a heads up, I don't know if everybody remembers this, but on your character sheet, everybody should have a 44 plus 4 potion because we gave them to you. Mm hmm Do I really want to use that? I feel like you guys are just fine, right? Yeah, just I'm at 1 HP, and almost everyone's dying, but do I really want to use the healing potion? Hmm. I think Neil's trying to get me to waste my healing potion. That's right, he is. Yeah. But the, here's the thing. Cypher, if she has the option to re-engage this exciting fight, especially after seeing what she saw Cassian do, how can she not be inspired to rejoin this fight? She's not going to sit on the sidelines mm -hmm. while he did some crazy awesome shit like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me get in on this. What's the roll for the potion? 4d4 4 plus 4. Plus four. Right. Can I just click it on my sheet? No. Nope. Okay, 44. That would be too much to ask for. This is an action. Boom, for 12 HP. Uh, plus four on top of that is 16. Hell yeah. Um, You're back. My action. I move in range of this Grell. Excellent. Um, And I use my bonus action to make an attack. You can only do that if you made an attack with your primary hand, unfortunately. That's so cringe. I know. Um, I guess. What? What can I do? Um, I can't do anything because everything would have to be a bonus action, right? Yeah, fuck it. I'm standing here and I'm ready. Base. All right. Uh, the ogre is dead. It cannot take a turn. The other Grell. Well, well, well. It's not looking great, but it passes its morale check. Not a problem. It is going to... Oh. <laughs> Steer me, he's right there. <laughs> I know, he's right there. <laughs> but um, that's just a, a silly way to go. So the Grell is just going to move five feet and tentacle at, at Iron Grip. Oh, god damn it. Um, I'm gonna roll better than that. Yeah. 
let's see, we're supposed to have advantage on the attack. That's just not going great. And it'll beak at Iron Grip. Ah. Oh. The and... beak skitters off my shield, and I laugh at it. And that is its turn. Iron Grip. I want to bite the tentacle creature. I want to bite one of the tentacles. Are you he's, sure? He's in like, the throes of battle, so he's going to grab one of the tentacles and like try to bite it off. Okay, go for it. He's gone. He's gone wild. What do you want? An unarmed attack? There you go. Hold yeah. On. Give me an unarmed attack. He's gone. Wait, I don't have an unarmed attack on my sheet. Uh, I'm gonna get it. Rip. D20 plus your strength mod plus um, three. Wait, can I make the shocking grasp of that attack instead? That'll use your int mod instead of your strength mod. Okay, great. We'll do the shocking grasp. Boom. Uh, I'll just I'll just use a shocking grasp, but in roleplay, okay. he's trying to like zap off a tentacle to eat it. Right. You do grab a portion of it and deliver a shock. Roll the damage. Zap eleven damage. Actually, fantastic damage. Um, it cannot take reactions until the start of its next turn. Boom. Right, Raven. Uh, the Raven will continue to provide advantage to Cassian. Excellent. Take dodge action. Uh, Mott does what only a minion can oh. and Wait. put his back to the enemy yeah. and make a club attack against the weird flying tentacle brain boy and Let's hit go, mitts. Uh, for two uh, mitts, not go. Mott, sorry, yes. Uh, He's a uh, hero. Mott <laughs> is gonna leave. Yeah, good. Uh, she's gonna go around the corner, a little bit of safety, and then uh, let the next ogre go. Who will Here it is, Nick. grab a javelin? <laughs> Wait, question. In my mind, I felt like the fact that the advantage and the disadvantage cancel out and then the dodge on top means that it would have disadvantage, but that's not how it works, is it? No. I don't even okay. know if you can dodge something you can't see. Um, probably you can. Honestly, though... He's gonna hit. Like we know, he's going to hit, and he's going Mitz to do eight damage. Mitz is right here and at oh. way lower AC. So goodbye, Mitz. It was lovely playing with you. He hurls it for twenty-one to hit, eleven <laughs> piercing damage, uh, bringing Mitz to zero. Goodbye, Mitz. To zero? Oh wait, Mitz is a minion. Oh yeah, shit. Mitz is a minion. Grell, uh, this one right here. Well, this situation is not looking super fantastic. Uh, I think we do need another morale check here, which is a Perfect. failure, and our creature will disengage and Wait, float. Wait, isn't that a pass? That is a pass. Fuck yes, good call. Well, 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 even better. Uh, the tentacles come out for you, Cassian. <laughs> they wrap around your arms, they wrap around your yes. body, but they cannot get purchase or grip. And then the beak comes in and also yes. will not hurt you. And um, that was bad. Here you go. Yep. Advantage. And dead. hit. Not quite dead. Ooh. And miss. The Grell lives. Steer mirror. Um, <clears throat> it's got to be done, hasn't it? Is that yeah. given that the Grell is in the air? Yeah. Can I get to Mitz? Um, yeah without taking an attack of opportunity. Yeah, totally. It can't even give do an attack of opportunity this round. Pretty sure it got shocking grass, so it yeah. has no reaction. Yep, it got grass, okay. it has no reaction. Cool. Um, so I think I move to here, mm -hmm. and then we'll attempt to stabilize Mitz with a medicine check. DC 10. Nick roll coming up. Don't you die on me, buddy. <laughs> All right. I'll bring him back. Cypher quick claw. Also muted. The girl next to me is almost dead, on. right? Let's fucking kill this guy. Yeah. Can you do it? Nope. Eight. It's all right. You get two more. Yep. And there you go. Nice. And that'll Eight. do it. And Ooh. it'll go down. It collapses onto the ground, a pile of brains and tentacles and beaks. Okay. Cassian right. will... Oh, go ahead. Um, wait, where the fuck out here? The girl's I'm gonna turn over here and use that. my bonus attack, right? Yep. Mate, it's yep. his it's his turn next. Just be careful. Yeah. Oh, you've got yeah. 17 health now. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's, fine. he's got it. He's yeah. got my it. He's in the heat. Attack. She's in the heat of combat. Exactly. Yeah. 
or a critical, critical miss. miss. Whoosh. Yeah. Cassian will call out to the um, ogre and say, we don't want to kill you. Come out here with your hands up and we will not have to murder you. <laughs> oh, Iron Triple will call out, I want to kill you. <laughs> um, I do believe this Grell is done. That is a pass though. But I still think wisdom prevails in this situation. All the other Grell are dead. This one will disengage into the ceiling and vanish from sight. Whoosh. How much movement Wait. can it do on a disengage? Um, only 30. 30. Oh, Good call. It is technically 40 feet in the air. You do have line of sight to it. Um, those of you with dark vision can see it. Those of you without dark vision can maybe barely see it. Whatever the triangle of 25 and 40 is the hypotenuse of that yeah um 25 so. and 40 um, yeah let me just do that real quick do, 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 do. uh 47 feet no so unless you have yeah. dark vision you cannot see this grell um iron grip the jailer you can still see it as it is ascending to the sky I'm full sending a level two magic missile into this thing. Full send. No hold bars. Nice. 44 um, plus four. I want big here. Okay, I want big. Really big. You need Boom. big. Uh, 13, 13 almost does it, but not quite. Um, Movement? Raven? Let me think about what I can do here. Let me look at the Raven's actions. I don't think it has much. It just has a beak attack, but you're not allowed to use familiar attacks. Yep. Um, does the Raven shed light because it's a familiar, or does it actually just like look like a Raven? No, it's it's a physical Raven, yeah. The real Raven. Alright, let me see. Does not shed light. I How big is this rock? Oh, that's a that's small a stone. stone. That's a light stone. I walk over and I pick up the rock and I hold okay. it above my head. Nice. Excellent. Giving just enough feet of vision for I people to see this. Excellent. All right. Melee minion. That's Mitz. That's uh... Let's go. Oh, he's passed a save. All right. He's good. Yeah. He's good. Mott's okay. outside. Mott's cool. Ogre goes. Oh, looks like everybody else is retreating or dying. There's only one thing left for an old ogre to do. Grab his javelin. Take a step forward into the light. Look at uh, at Steermere in the ass. eyes. Raise the javelin. But you can see it coming now, unfortunately, because the light is nearby, right? Yes. So it's yes. at disadvantage. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you have essentially negative AC if the attack is at disadvantage or not. Whoosh! It's a miss. miss. You I, don't, I don't have negative AC. I've got 16. I was just, 16. You have bad luck. You know, it's essentially negative oh. AC. Uh, Cassian. I'm glad we're finally admitting it now. Cassian will drop his axe. He's going to pick up the bow that should be right here. It's, it's right, right there. To, he's going to notch an arrow. Is this a short bow or a long bow? It's a short bow. Where'd you get the arrow from? I would assume that he has his arrow thing on him because he probably has his bow also strung to his back, but... Oh, Cassian has his sheet. quiver and arrow and bow so. on him. That's fine then. Perfect. All my, it's all my character sheet. Yeah, then you've got it. Here you go. Uh, regular attack, right? Yep. Seven. Hit! Oh, yes. Five. Five is just enough to nice. kill the Grell and it drops to the ground in a heap of blood Take and brains and flesh and ooze. I'm going to shoot the ogre uh, at... Disadvantage? Nope. Nope, fine. Short range. 12. Hit. Two. Minimal damage. Steer mirror. Damage is damage. Uh, I cast Sacred Flame on the Ogre. The Ogre takes a... Actually, that's not at disadvantage. That is a big dodge. He effectively avoids it. Passes, uh, and then I will move... Yeah. Um, Cypher. One enemy left. Fuck it. 
Trying to kill this guy, right, guys? Yeah. Don't quite have enough movement to reach him, though. Uh-uh. Yeah. You have to, uh, to dash. I would have to dash and then just stand in front of him menacingly. <laughs> Sounds like a terrible plan. You're in the heat of battle. Yeah, but I'm not fucking stupid, okay? Um, What's the difference between Cypher and Cassian? Cassian would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright. Cypher and Cassian exchange glances at each other. <laughs> Cassian gives you a nod. <laughs> and, uh. Oh, fuck. I don't have that much HP left, guys. <laughs> yeah, but how much heart do you have? It's true. I believe in the heart of the cards. Um. Iron Grip is untouched in this fight. He's right by your side. <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. I'm dashing. Let's go. I'm dashing, and I stand menacingly in front of the ogre. Sword die drawing. and feel like a fool. <laughs> you have no one to blame but yourself. Iron Grip the Jailer. Um, I'm going to move to here. Can I occupy this space? Yeah, there's enough space that, you know, this guy could squish there, yeah. and you could squish there. Quickly roll a I... con check, Koibu, for Mott the healer. She's giving a concentration plus two AC, I think, to Cypher. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I've just realized the light stone should have gone off when she cast that. Oh. Uh, is light a concentration spell? It's not. It's just got a black oh, it's duration. Not? Yeah. Oh, yes, so you I'm move. also we carrying the rock. Okay. Uh, it should be good. Yeah, this in is terms of like the exact right. positioning here, real quick. Like Cypher's engaged in battle, but she's not stupid. She wouldn't like engage and like block this very, very narrow space so that yeah, no this is other fine. of her fighters could like. Yeah. So she would like stand like maybe. No, right? the, the, there's enough yeah, room yeah. that you guys can both be there. Yeah. There's half a square on either side of it. It's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, um, Iron Griff. If the lightstone is still active, I'm carrying it. It's in my hand. It is yeah. still active. Okay. You have it in your hand. Okay, for my free item and interaction, I'm going to drop it to my feet. Mm -hmm. um, and I am going to cast Shocking Grasp on this guy. I'm just going to give him the dirtiest slap mm. that I can. Oof. Uh, oops, Other I double button. cast it. 16. Wow. Boom, 10. Yeah. No reaction. Shocking Grasp do that much damage? Roy had that spell. When you hit fifth level, it's damage doubles. Okay. Yeah. All right, Raven does the something. Raven has 50 meter feet of movement, so it'll fly over our heads. Okay. Um, the melee minion does nothing. Mott does nothing. The ogre goes, takes the club, raises it, and drops it on Cypher's head. Whoa! With a nine. Yes, Wild yeah. miss. Drop the bow. Grab my axe. Can I move to here? Yep. Okay. Now I'm gonna lure you a little bit here, but I should be able to throw my axe with great weapon mastery because when you read it, it says, you've learned to put the weight of a weapon to your advantage. All right, I thought it was the weight of myself. Can I get it with great weapon mastery or do you just want a regular throw? You wanna throw your great axe yeah. and great. use great weapon master right. with a thrown great axe. Correct, and you know what? I'll give this to you. If I miss, how about it hits the wall and then we do a check to see if it breaks? Well, it specifically says before you make a melee, make a melee attack. attack. Oh, a melee mm. attack. Yeah. Okay. That works. I'm still gonna throw it and we can still do the other thing without the Grey Weapon Master. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it's definitely disadvantage on the attack for the distance because a great ax is not meant to be thrown and it's a big weapon. So make two attacks, we'll take the lower one. All you need is nine, it's a hit. Oh. 10 damage. <laughs> Whap! It sticks itself in the ogre's shoulder. Ogre cries out in pain. Steer bear. Uh, no, sacred flame. And it's a hit for 10 points. No, no, it passed it safe. Oh, yes, my mistake. Sorry, good call. Yeah. Uh, Cypher, you're finally here. The ogre's here. Your friend is here. It's the last round of battle. You slash once, it's a hit. You're muted. Eight damage. 
It's a hit. I have no idea what you're saying, but you're doing you're so muted. much damage. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> Did a I ton said, of damage. I'm putting him. I'm putting him in the, in the blender. Okay. Yeah. Offhand weapon. Oh my god. Ten. Oh damage. my god. That's the ogre right. wavers. It sort of drops to one knee as Iron Grip stares it in the face. Blood drips down of its face. There's a little bit of drool mixed in it. There's a daze in its eyes. Uh, draw of razors. Iron Grip the trailer will... Uh, I'm goblin. Scum. Uh, he's going to tell him, my friend's going to kill you. And he's going to try to grapple the ogre. <laughs> and, the classic. Classic. <laughs> yeah, arena See how there. it feels, Neil. <laughs> Make me an athletics check. Opposed Gosh. by the ogre's athletics or acrobatics. 19. 19. That's a 19. That's good. Jesus. The on, got you nice. grab the ogre. Headlock. <laughs> I got him in the head. The ogre groans. The raven goes. Melee minion does nothing. Mott does nothing. It's the ogre's turn. It's grappled by this hobgoblin. Uh, how how do you have the ogre? Tell me. Uh, so I'm like, how much bigger than me is it? That's the real question. Much. Like. Okay. Yeah. I like. I like have it by like the lips. Like I'm like sh my feet are on its shoulder blades, and I have them by like the lips. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so he's grimacing as I'm screaming and pulling on his face. Um, the ogre is going to use every last one of his seven brain cells and take the club in his hands and try to whap the hobgoblin off of his skull. If it rolls a one, it hits itself. Yes. Easy. Okay. Easy. Whap! It's a miss. It just hits the armor of the hobgoblin ineffectively. Cassian, I'm gonna walk your up here. great axe is like sticking out of the ogre's shoulder. As gonna, Cassian approaches, uh, put my say, leave it for Cipher. I'm gonna put my hand on Cipher. Cipher, we should ask this ogre some questions. You shouldn't kill it here. Whoa. Let's take the great axe out, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll, uh, uh, I'll wait. Steer mirror. Um. I cast Sacred Flame on Ogre. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll kill it, so. It fails. It takes seven. All right. It almost dies, but not quite. Perfect. Cypher. There's Good job, not much me. left Thank on you. this Ogre. It's basically um, dead. Yeah, Cypher does not see any value in asking this Ogre any questions. She's going to fucking kill it. You get shot. And you do two damage to an ogre with three what? attacks when it's got AC nine. Yes, oh, you yeah. can. Yes, you can. Biggest Stacy. The she ogre dies. Slashes the, the legs of the ogre, bringing him down, and um, will stab him through the heart. Yeah. And as it goes to the ground, it will again whisper in its ear. I see a disappointed look in Cassian's face as he turns around and walks away. What do you What do you whisper in their ear as they die? Do we know? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Only people who have died have heard it. <laughs> nice. Wait, does that mean Open Haven <clears throat> are like, is Roy like keeping a list of the things she said to the things she's killed? Like, what the hell is, does all this mean? Can she? Can Roy hear that? I don't know. A, a gentle whisper said between dying creatures. Uh, probably not. I love the idea of Roy ha ha being the only other creature in the world that has a list of all the things you said to the things you killed. <laughs> um, as the ogre dies, I walk up to this growl's corpse here. I like kick it over so like its beak is showing, and I say, "What the fuck are these things?" To more or less to Cassian. The great that's fighters, true. that's for sure. Uh, I me. don't think I've ever seen these. Have I ever heard about these Koibu? No. No. This is never, disgusting. Never it's an abomination. I agree. Could we uh, gotta... regroup outside? This be the worst. Some sort of come back. demented wizard. Iron Grip oh, Razor, could you imagine commanding one of these in the arena? Oh. 
And it would be beautiful to watch your opponent get dragged to the sky and dropped. Like a How egg. are you guys feeling? Are you healthy? I look around. I feel pretty rough. Maybe we should rest tonight and then search the cave tomorrow. I think we should but go we outside have... for your sake. We've been roughed up a bit. Yeah. We, we have materials and loot together. These beasts yes. have powerful venom we should collect. Drawbrazer, you and I can stay uh, back and pull a few of these out. Let them go. Yeah, okay. come on. So I think the five of us will go and draw Razor and Cassian can stay inside the cave. Keep the lights mm. down. We'll pull two back. Mott will use yep. her last second level spell to cast Prayer of Healing. Um, well, I think we tell her not to. Why? Because fifth edition is stupid and you can just use all your head dice and get all your Yeah, we can just heal on our short rest. What if something Double. happens before then? You're all can... wounded. Then We're all later. almost no, no, dead. No, just, 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 Neil's right. Neil's right. This is a good time to do it. It's literally got such good value right now. All right. All right. <clears throat> so she will do 2d8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. Um, to... 2d8 plus 7. Yes. So this is to um, Mitz. This is to Stearmere. This oh. is to uh, um, Cypher. Okay. This is to herself. Is shit. This is to Ethan, which is shit. And this is to Cassian. Alright, if we're. Oh, we did this, up, I think we can go need... back in. Yeah, but then we don't need to go out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fucking hell, that's such a great healing spell. We go out for 10 minutes, then we come back in, and we're gonna keep going. Well, let's do that on the other um, side of our break. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Patreon.com slash save or die. If you want some cool benefits, you want to name some characters or, you know, support the show so that Neil can continue to eat because he is living paycheck to paycheck on those Patreon episodes, guys. Feed me. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Lazarus Expedition. <clears throat> the party has survived. And they're going to go back in the cave with some more light stones yes. and search it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Does she have another spell for light stone? Yeah, she can make as many light stones as she wants. They're in action. A they last trip? an hour. It's a cantrip. Nice. Easy peasy. Then I right. want... How long does it take to make? Sorry. Oh, seconds. You know, six seconds okay. for each one. She needs yes. to make seven of them then. Yeah, she'll just make a whole bunch of light stones and hand them out. In the party. Mott, I'm very proud of you. You were uh, very brave in there. Yeah, I think I actually wanted to say to Matt yeah. as we were walking back in, like, hey, you know, thanks for risking yourself to save my life. Although I suppose I didn't actually know that that happened. No, yeah. Probably he could have would assumed. Be, he would be you. one of the last of the peasants to die in a peasant fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go up to Mitz as well, and I want to roll for this mechanically, Koibu. I want to give Mitz, like, I want to dap him up, you know? I want to give him the coolest handshake, because mm. I'm just, I'm, yeah. I want to give him the coolest handshake. So can I get a handshake for this cool roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a, um, a car... Charisma or a dex check, your call. D20 um, plus just my charisma mod, right? Yeah. Yeah. 19. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good um, You can only have one light spell active at a time. Oh. We'll take one then. It's perfect. Bummer. Okay. Cool. Well, Cypher, you can search. I give it. Cypher will go through, kind of uh, do her like play by play review of the fight that went down. And as she does it, she will comment a lot on like. Sturmier, you are quite the fighter, but I think you need to take care not to get hit so much in these kinds of situations. <laughs> and um, I think it'd be very advantageous for us if you kept yourself a little bit more safe and out of harm's way in these fights. Do you agree? I think it's a good point, Cypher, but unfortunately, I was trying to remove myself from the battle. I just did not expect the uh, well, the brains from above. Cassie, don't mm. laugh. Sturmier, just don't get hit. <laughs> we were all surprised by it. The brains, as you call them. Maybe we're like the standing maw. above one, and she's kind of poking it with her sword. The maw knows you chase well, Stearmer. It calls to you. Yes, well, I'll be, uh, I'll be staying out of reach of whatever I can going forward. At least until we get a chance to rest in a town. Those were I guess true our, agents I guess, of the maw. I guess, especially for humans, um, reaction speed goes down a little bit with age. So we need to take that into account for our next fights. Mm. I have course, heard people yeah. describe things like fine wine. Perhaps they get tastier with age as well. 
I'm not dead yet, Iron Grip. My liver is staying just where it is, thank you. Yeah, is a cow less tasty well. if it is alive or dead? I don't know. Depends if the cow's been drinking too much whiskey for the last 30 years. Roll. I think you'll find my liver not so tasteful. Roll of Razor, and uh, she will say this in a tone that kind of indicates that they've talked about this about a million times. She'll say, <laughs> People, food. Oh, I forget. You guys are squeamish when it comes to eating. My apologies. Not when it comes to eating, Iron Grip, no. When it comes to eating other people. Uh, we have fought and battled together. I would let you eat me now. <laughs> oh, that's all well and good. But... <laughs> Things aren't that desperate yet. I'd rather I'm glad avoid. to hear that you'd let us eat you. Thank you. Oh, only if let's... I died valiantly in battle. Let's look what less if... inward and more forward. Um, do we want to keep continuing down here? The last time we went in here, we kind of made the decision based on that it couldn't hurt. And I'd like to admit that I was wrong on that. And I'd like to apologize for making the bad call here. That's all right, Cypher. We forgive you. At this point, um, I think we should continue. We know what we're looking for um, enemy-wise, and I think that those were the last of the ogres. I Joel Fraser will more. pick up the light stone and throw it as hard as he can at the ceiling above yeah. us. Yeah. You will see there is that wounded Grell that escaped the battle earlier that is still floating up there. <clears throat> oh, and then the Ready light stone bows. will come down. More Go than breaths. 60 feet away, right? More than 60 feet away. But within bow range? Bow. But yeah. within bow range. Disadvantage I'll pull out on my attacks. bow and I'll get ready. Uh, I'll ask everyone to have their bows ready and I'll prepare to okay. throw the stone again. I uh, I hold sacred flame if it comes in range now. Okay. My bow ready. I throw uh, the rock. You throw the rock and to your frustration, as the rock sails through the sky, the Grail is on the move. It is moving along the ceiling, kind of dodging stalactites and coming, going down with the ceiling and lifting back up. It's on the run. Um, you can make shots. 17. Hit. Oh, it's a disadvantage though. Yes. Hit. Still Lots. a hit. Doesn't matter. Five. Um, does not quite kill it. Cypher hits and will kill it. And it will drop nice. out of the ceiling. <laughs> Makes a really satisfying sound as it Good job. drops down. Does it drop slowly, Neil, or does it just. No, it just fall. full drop. Yeah. It splatters. Um, and Cypher will look at uh, Cassian again and smile again with a lot of respect. So nice shot. Cassian will ignore you this time. Um, he will brush ahead and put his bow, sling it on his back, um, and continue on. All right. Well, uh, I would like to take one of the beaks off of this thing as a trophy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going Can to reveal the, the lights on in here? cave to you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we turn the lights on. Cool. Um, Counter over. We won. We won. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll search the place and what you will eventually find after a little bit of looking around is that this crevice back here um, has like fissures that run deep into the earth. Like I, I know on the map right here, this looks just like flat ground, but this is actually a, a crack that goes down like a, you know, a, a wide is this? Oh, cool. Like a 15 foot saying, yeah. wide, like cracky crevicey rift down into like the earth. Does it look like giants or ogres can fit through here? Does not look like ogres could fit through there, but it does look like Grell could fit through there. What are the smell coming from this area? Hot and sulfury, with we some search... other sort of you know stench amongst it. Can we search the cave extensively then, because um, I guess yeah. Cassian's under the uh, opinion that there should be something here. Yeah. I would also send my raven as far down into the chute as possible. We could also if drop the carry... lightstone down there as the raven goes. I think the raven could carry the light stone if it's small enough in its yep. beak. Yeah. Point. Yeah, yeah, Very good. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <clears throat> the raven's going to have a hard time. It can walk. It can do little hops 10 feet around. It can like, I guess it could like hop down the wall and like, you know, flap and climb and flap and climb. Yeah, that's fine. I, I like that. That's a great approach for the raven. Um, as the raven goes down and it sounds like yeah, it sounds like you're gonna be over here with the raven. Whoops, wrong buttons. Yes. 
Um, um, and everyone else is going to be searching the cave while you're kind of standing nearby the raven watching it go down. Well, if, if I, I think, think we're going to be I'm waiting running. because the raven has the one light stone. Oh, yeah. right. Makes so sense. So we're going to kind of just be waiting right here with him. Okay. Cool. Um, and then the Mott is also here with a with a pebble in her hand because she's not dumb and she's ready mm-hmm. to create another light stone if we need. Got it. <clears throat> well, the raven will hop down and hop down and down and down and down and down. And after it's gone down like 200 feet, um, it's just, it's still... Wait, it can't go that far, right? Oh, oh that's yeah. right. You can get to about the edge of 100 feet um, and then you'll lose your ability to communicate with it. Uh, and so at the 100 feet barrier border, it it's still going down and down and down. I'll make the oh. raven drop the, like toss the light stone down and like mm. curiously watch it. Give me a perception check with the raven. All right. Um, plus three. Ka-choom. Plus three. See? That's a Very good. 16. Yeah. Ooh. Down this crevice, which drops a really great distance, appears to be pretty ordinary, just rocks and rocks and rocks. But then hundreds of feet down there, you start to see like glittering, glowing rocks. Or, or maybe they're not glowing, maybe they're just catching the light in just the right way. They seem to be multicolored and multifaceted. And the rock like plunges past this area of colorful stones. Um, and eventually, like just before it hits the ground, you can see that there is some sort of um, sparkling, reflective surface, maybe like a pool of water or of like quicksilver or some sort of like fluid that undulates as the rock hits it and then the light goes out. Mm. Ooh, that is curious, isn't it? It's a... Yeah, I'll, I'll report this information to the party in great detail. Does it seem like we could climb down there? How rough is it? I think there's an ooze down there, right? It would be hundreds of feet and one small slip up and you would just go plummeting. I mean, in theory, you could climb it, but it, it would take it a lot of Does it sound like the rock went into the, to the thing and then just immediately was gone? From the Raven's point of view, it was hard to tell if like the rock hit something solid and broke apart or if it got absorbed into something that was opaque or if it hit like a zone that destroyed the magic but the light went out like as it got right near that undulating reflective surface but there's no way to tell from such a like a thousand feet away that it was watching let's think about that and search the cave as we're searching I'm walking next to Cassian and I say just to him as curious as that is down there I'm out of spells the healers use most of their spells I saw Cypher drink her potion. I don't think we should be going down there. I agree with you. I think it's something that if we ever needed, uh, I'm guessing Mithril, we could come back to one day. Sure. Keep it in mind. Maybe it's like, you know, a ruby mine or something, but we don't need that right now. But we know about it. We know about it. And knowledge, Um... (laughs) Sumir. And Cassian will go on about how uh, knowledge is sometimes the most important thing you can know. You know, uh, perhaps we could sell the knowledge of uh, Mithril Mine when we get to Blub. We don't know if it's Mithril or not. Don't know it's not Mithril. Perhaps we could send word back to Lady Farseer and she could uh, have some people come and check it out. Give us profit. Perhaps. I'm just thinking we sell the knowledge. I mean, by the time they find it, it's not Mithril, we'll be long gone. No one would believe us, though. And I I don't think we should lie like that. Fair enough. Let's uh, just finish checking this place out, and uh, I'm keen to get out of here. I will find with my party what the ogre and the cyclops were heavily interested in and regarding. While you look it up, yeah. I'll talk to um, Drollbrazer. Those creatures, mm. uh, were they from the Maw? Sent to bring us in? Of course. They, uh, they are consumers, like all of us are. Um, they respect people who eat them. That's why I've got to speak. He says, slapping his shoulder. All creatures of the Maw respect things that eat you. 
That's why I respect is... ogres. They can eat me. So they're up the higher in the hierarchy. Do you respect an ogre who can't kill you? No, I'd eat him. <laughs> um, okay. But the silver stone and the shining gems below, uh, I've heard of these. Uh, my people call them shaman stones. Um, they have no value. Uh, it's not hard enough to make materials out of. It can only be used for ceremonial rituals. Is that right? <laughs> you, how do you know what it is? Oh, we had a cave uh, where my people lived. Um, and the walls were coated in this material. Um, and it was uh, holy. You couldn't break it off the wall, but it wasn't strong enough to make weapons with. It would crumble in your hand. Maybe your people didn't know how to smith it. How do you know that's what it is? It looked very similar, and I was looking through the raven's eyes. Well, as you search the cave, you will find a whole bunch of, like, broken up crates and boxes. Um, some of them have food from, like, a lot, like, really stale bread. Um, some blocks of cheese, some dried meats, uh, lots of, like, bones. Lots and lots of bones from creatures that have been eaten. Uh, you'll find a bunch of javelins and some clubs. You'll find some casks of plum wine. Only one of them has any left in it. The others have been consumed by the ogres and the cyclops. You'll find uh, some miscellaneous tools like some rope and some oars and a half, maybe a quarter of a boat over here. And some of the things that you might find on those, like a little bit of hammer and nails and um, small, smaller crates and boxes and what, what um, oar is it? fabric. Uh, like a paddle or all right <laughs> yeah sorry um you will also find 632 silver and 32 gold uh, all right you, you're recording that costume yeah i'll add it <clears throat> you know before I we wonder... leave i want to get matt to throw the lights down down these crevices just to make sure there's no like hidden rooms we should also yeah. drop one down into the water yeah yeah as well. i agree yeah um, I wonder if you know that merchant who was just coming through the Badlands, yeah? Mm hmm I wonder it's pretty far out there, but maybe he hired these ogres to watch over this cave? He know. probably fucking made those brain things. Are you telling me that there's no way that's natural, it's gotta be the word of a demented arcane wizard of some sort. Roy would know. Roy would probably know. Ethan, I mean, have you ever heard of these things? Ethan shakes his head. Never in all my years have I seen a creature like this. Ostigan? Ostigan shakes his head. Uh, no, not I. I'm assuming I haven't either in my time out in the plains of our game. Nope. These are strange things you've never heard Nick, of before. Out of character, don't these things hang around fucking Mithril? Oh, I don't know. Do they? I, I could have sworn that the only other place that I've seen them in a Koibu campaign was in the dwarven area where the mithril mine was but i could just be talking out of my ass that is true but i don't believe that that is a a thing about them but okay. yeah it could uh, be in second maybe i don't think it was in 5a iron grip will just say they're manifestations of hunger the world is hungrier <laughs> than it's ever been the gods are active <clears throat> uh it's obvious to me i don't know how you guys can't see it because it's just manifestations of hunger it's For a giant every, every it's single a giant time brain. Every single time we encounter a new creature, they're a manifestation of hunger. Until someone explains to you what they actually are. <laughs> but you cannot deny been... these things eat. They eat. Oh, they, oh, there is a brain and a beak. What more could a creature do with a brain and a beak but eat? We check the crevices and I'll even... Um... Mm -hmm. Mitz, can you go swim down there and do you see anything? Oh, I was the one who has to get wet takes off his boots and off his pants <laughs> and strips down and starts to wade into the water and gets pretty deep in there and um, comes back out a few minutes later and goes, uh, there's a really, really big passageway in here. I have no idea where it goes. Does it oh, come shit. out of the water? Or is it just through the water? Uh, I don't understand the difference in that question. There's a passageway underwater. It's underwater, so... I, yeah. It's not like the dragon where the dragon has like water here, you go through it and then come out and then he I didn't it. search that far. I just saw that there was a big passageway and I thought it would be best to <laughs> say something Well, who can hold that breath for the longest? Probably me. It's constitution, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got 14 con. 
Or like you. I have I have eaten enough food to not need to breathe for a day. Fantastic then. I mean we found some rope. We can tie we can tie some rope together, tie it around Iron Grip and have him go in and try and find out. Iron Grip again says, How does that rope help? To pull him back in if he passes out. If he passes out, is he not dead already? Not particularly, no. Do you not well, die when you caused. inhale water? Um, Isn't that just like <laughs> eating with your lungs? Yes, it should it not kill you. Yeah, but I've there's other situations. Before. Well, let's not send you would, then. Would the rope not just get in the way of a person trying to move through the water? Here, just let me do it. Cassian will take off his armor. Uh, leave his axe, because that will do him no help. And Cassian will jump down and, uh, with a light stone, swim. Drollfraser uh-huh. will give him a dagger to hold in his teeth. Yeah. yeah. Plunging everybody else in the cave into perpetual darkness. Yeah. They can all stand near each other, and uh, if they need... Well, it should be a minute or two. Should be yeah, fine. Drol- Drol- Drollfraser is taking the opportunity of the lack of light to, like... He's like gleeful after winning, so he's gonna sneak off into the darkness and try to sneak up on Matt to scare her. Jesus. <laughs> Give me a stealth check at advantage. Uh hold on. Boom. Twelve versus her passive perception of Ooh. Thirteen, no. Uh, your attempts Damn. to sneak up on her are are, are foiled. Um, How does it go down? Yeah, so I, I like I sneak off and like 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 a child. I'm like standing at the edge, like like a child like standing beneath a curtain, but you can like see his feet. I'm mm-hmm. like standing against the wall, hiding, and then I start mm-hmm. like slowly walking towards her to like sneak up on her. Yeah, and at a certain point, uh, she'll just lift her walking stick and sort of like um, kind of bop it behind her shoulder as like a, you know, coming down between you and her behind her as like just a a barrier of this putting something between the two of you as you get close. You could still, you know, reach out and grab her, but it's clear that she's aware that something is approaching from behind and that she's not that concerned about it, but is keeping some distance. Um, And after this, she will light some of the candles that she carries and place them around the pool of water. Um, providing a little bit of light for the rest of you. She has ten candles and a tinderbox, and so she'll just scatter ten candles along the the coastline here. What do you want, Koibu? Perception? Mm. Persuasion? Survival? Let's see. You have no rope around you, right? So you're not being hindered by anything. It's not going to get caught on anything. You're just... Um... You're just exploring where this uh, this cave, this wet cave goes. Yeah. What I want to know is how much risk you're willing to undertake. Cassian's not willing to risk his like life here for this, right? Um, okay. His first dive is probably going to be his best. So he's going to swim it pretty hard and see if he can find like an out or an exit. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it looks like it's just completely an underground cavern, he's not going to continue on perpetually. Okay. I mean... Creature can hold its breath for a number of turns equal to one, plus its con modifier. Um, and then we have said if you are active during that period of time, that duration is cut in half. I believe... Um, Does toughness give him mm-mm. an extra one for that? No. No. Right. Suffocating. Anytime we... Okay. So what's your con mod? It's going to be two. So you can hold your breath for three minutes. So a minute and a half. So you can dive down for like 30 seconds and then come back out. Um, and that'll be well within your, your breath holding range with absolutely no what risk. Do I, what do I do if I stay like a round longer? How much damage is it? Or are you just... I think you just I think you just fucking die. Yeah, if you cannot breathe you die, right? Yeah. Oh, when a creature runs out of breath or is choking, it can survive for a number of rounds equal to its con mod. Again, divided by two if you're exerting yourself. I don't know. We'd get to it, it would 
it's going to be dangerous, right? There, yeah, this, is a, yeah. this is a saber die forget. effect. Rounds are six seconds, and you can move 60 feet in a round. So you can yeah. do quite a lot in okay. 45 yeah. so seconds. Two minutes right, so of give me a, a Give me a perception check then, buddy. Buddy old pal. Any bonuses for having a light stone? Anything like that? No, no, no. Without the light stone, you would have no ability to make a perception check whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Fuck. You dive in. You you see the tunnel that he's talking about, and you start to swim through it. But in an attempt to make sure you don't just die in the water um, alone after fighting all these monsters, you you get to a point where you feel like you should turn back, and so you do turn back. And all you've really seen is that there is the shaft doesn't like drop down in the water. It's more of like a, a gentle slope, and then forward going um, this direction. So it Can dips down a little bit and it goes that way. As I'm turning back, another perception check on. Um, I'm gonna be looking if there's any like giant hand scrapings on the wall or mm. anything like that. Yeah. Because then that would tell me if the giants are actually traveling this path. Yeah, yeah. Give me a, another perception check. Nineteen. Yeah, actually, as you are, you don't, you're, you like can see down the tunnel a little bit, but you can't see anything of importance down there. By the time you decide to turn back, but as you're swimming back out of the pool you will notice that there is a, a giant um, javelin head that must have broken off or fallen off or been dropped out of a pocket or something just resting in the tunnel at the bottom of this pool here, giving pretty half decent evidence to the notion that maybe a giant or an ogre or um, a cyclops has come through this area once upon a time. To, uh, to I mean, have we found where the ogres and the, the but they were sleeping? Like, have we found any evidence of... Well, of... you found a bunch of food and broken supplies and casks and wine yeah. and, and like, bones in this area. And it also includes, like, some blankets and some sections okay. of sail. So this could be where they were sleeping. Because they also could have just dropped the head of a javelin into the water, right? Possible. I suppose. Cassian will appear out of the water. <clears throat> I think this is uh, a path that the giants were taking. He's out of breath. Um... Mm. I couldn't get a good look at it because I was afraid that if I didn't turn around there would be no other water, but or there'd be no air. But if the giants are taking it, they probably can't hold their breath too much longer than I can. Aren't the giants much larger than you with great higher con scores? And probably, it's couldn't they true. swim faster than you? It says, um... Uh, can a giant Ethan? move faster than a man? Do they move 60 or do they move 30 as well? And they move 50, didn't they? Ogres have a move speed of 40. Cyclops has a move speed of 60. Uh, Iron Grip. Didn't you have a, yes. a fish at some point instead of a bird? Uh, you're correct. Uh, I would have to recast feet. Find Familiar, unfortunately. Does anybody no, have any... Does anybody have what? any water breathing spells? I've used all my spells. We would need a long rest. Although, hang on. Hmm. Didn't we have a potion of water breathing? No. Potion of invisibility, potion of poison resistance. Hmm. Potions. I mean, I could do water walk as a ritual, but it doesn't really... Could you send your piranha through? I'd have to recast Find Familiar. If we want to do that, that's fine. But it means you wouldn't have... I, I would have to recast for a piranha, and then if we want a bird again, I'd have to... So I'd use two of my remaining three Find Familiars. Yeah. It's good. It's a good idea. You... I mean, it does kind of solve the problem. But is, wait, hang on. We might be. Do you feel like it's more than a hundred feet away I, from the edge? I of don't the water? think my character has any idea. Mm -mm. With that bad perception check. You well, know. yeah, but he swam around down there for a while. He might have an idea. Like, there's no way a hundred feet is going to get us to the end. Because it depends how far he did swim. Because mm. it might be that we can just dismiss the familiar idea out of hand. Mm. I probably swam further than 100 feet, right, Neil? Yeah, because it's 30 feet to the wall, yeah. and then it goes more than 70 feet that way for sure. Mm -hmm. If I went down, I could probably swim down to the entrance pretty easily. Wait, so mm -hmm. he went more than 100 feet through the tunnel? He was... It's hard to tell. Um, hard to the tell. tunnel went further, though, so... If you were standing on dry land, you would not be able to... Your familiar would not be able to get to the end, because... Cassian didn't even see what the end would have been like. Sorry, my voice isn't coming through. So let's say I was treading water, mm -hmm. tre treading water, mm -hmm. um, and I set the piranha down. It would probably get further than Cassian. Hard to know. 
you know, there's a, a dearth of information here. I'll, I'll um, simply say to the party, I have no problem casting the Piranha spell, but it is a matter of resources. Uh, we have only three casts of that spell left. I'm Just to give you a mind, me, when we get to the end of this river and we get to the swamp, mm -hmm. are we in, like, is there a town between here and Blup, or are we going to have mm -mm. to battle our way through the swamp before, to get to Blup? Battle is the unlikely. Stay in the boat, don't fall out. You should be fine. Should be fine. Okay. Well, maybe it's worth it. I'm gonna bring Drollfraser in with me we this time. On our way through here. Drollfraser, can you help me um, see if you can find an air pocket in these stalactites? I kind of point up. Should be in the same in the cavern. Maybe we can find somewhere I can get a little bit of a breath halfway through. Sure. Drollfraser will strip down and uh, going together with one lightstone. His scarred hobgoblin body. Ooh. Scarred uh, with, uh, like, whips or fire? Uh, arena wounds and lots and mm. lots of... Uh, he also has some scarification. There's, like, patterns on his body. Mm. Is this... I mean, tell me if this is stupid. Is filling a water skin with air and taking it down with you for an extra breath? Is that that is thing, not stupid. Is that a thing that can exist, or it, would it immediately fill with water as soon as you opened it and therefore be unable to take a breath? Definitely not a thing in real life, right? Yeah, I if, don't it think can, so. if it can seal water from air, surely it should be able to seal air from water. Yeah, yes. like as soon as you as soon as you open it, uh, before you can get your mouth over it, will it not just it well? You could. Water. What if you have your mouth to it? You... But like, I think the bigger problem is that it's average breath. It's gonna fuck up your buoyancy. It's gonna make it awkward to swim because now you're. Got you're holding on to a bag yeah. that is pulling you. You're not just like yeah. able to swim casually, um, and you might be able to get a breath out of it, um, but that doesn't like you're not going to be able to carry a bunch of these things. Yep. Yeah, but you a know. breath doubles your abilities to stay down there. Let's try the air pocket to see if we can find one. An an average human breath is half a liter, so that would fit into in a water mm -hmm. skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you do this in real life? I don't know. I feel like I've never seen anyone do it or heard of anyone doing that. So it makes me you think would have it to pop, You would have to pop the cork into your mouth. Have a really good seal mm -hmm. around the lip of the water skin. Yeah, yeah. That would work, yeah. I think there's just enough room for this to go wrong that it's generally that yes. not used. no one's done it. I've never heard of anyone trying something like this. It's mm. something you would see in a Hollywood movie or an action D&D &D campaign. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Are we able to check for um, an air pocket before we try this? Yeah, so you can dive down and kind of look around with the light stone, and you will see that on the ceiling in the cave, there are like little tiny air pockets, but when you go to explore them, it feels like it, it's probably just the bubbles that have been left by whoever has been diving through here before, and they're like scattered across. There's not like a nice fat air pocket, but there's like, you know, here is a bubble that has been sitting here against the, the cave and the water for, you know, unknown amount of time. Um, so Probably there's not, not like... Full of oxygen either. Yeah. Yeah, they're you know, already de semi-depleted and there's going to be lots of little ones and you would probably suffocate trying to go from little pocket to little pocket. Um, can I summon my raven underground during one of my turns as far down the tunnel as I can? You mean your piranha uh, or raven? Your uh, raven? Uh, the, well, we haven't made the piranha yet. Yeah, we? I was just making sure. You no, want to no, summon no, the can't. raven in the water? Yes, and then I'm exactly the next turn I'm going to de-summon him. Because I think dismissing him is a bonus action. So basically, I'm using him to see if I can see the surface of the water above. As far nice. as... Let me, uh, let me cast Find Familiar real quick for you. Or uh, Link, Link to the Child. Yeah, so, it's an action to dismiss. It's an action to summon. So it's not a problem you only got a range of 10 feet though so you can only cast it 10 feet away from you bummer oh no uh, wait but that's the casting of the spell that might not the be the summoning of it i can summon him 30 feet down so however mm. far we get i can get yeah. him to look another 30 feet and if there's light maybe he sees it and then i'll immediately I mean, de-summon him a bear there is can, no can light bear. can raven swim well whatever happens the raven is summoned into existence it can at least hold its breath for six seconds at the very minimum mm. um 
and you close your eyes, you, you see through it, you see just kind of awkwardness. It doesn't really, there's no additional information that the Raven gives you, um, and then you dismiss it. Um, and the party can surface again. So now no one has, no one's pushed themselves to any risky situations. The length of the tunnel is unknown. If ogres or giants have been crawling through it, then they can definitely make more distance on a single breath than anyone in the party can. Yeah. And at the end of the day, swimming into an, a depth or a length that is unknown is going to be a... Risky, yeah. What yeah. distance That's can scary. you make? You can either make it or not, and if you cannot make <laughs> it, you die, and there's no... What are we, what are we likely back. to find, like, really? There's not going to be a magic item, is there? Because the there ogres would have had to. it. But the Cyclops Depends would have the, the magic item. item. Well, what? Well, let's theorize. What could what could the Cyclops have down there that he wouldn't? Crystal ball. The whole Cyclops civilization, his stash. Uh, was the cave a big enough for a Cyclops doesn't... to fit? Mm -hmm. it could be I'm of the view that this isn't worth it. Yeah. Um, but it is a distraction. The from issue our main is, it's out of character. I'll never know what was in here. It'll piss me the, off. The, the thing is, this, the giants can, the ogre can obviously make the swim without any risk at all. So I think if you take a little bit of risk, you can probably make it through. I think so. So it sounds like grab... Stearmir is going to take the risks. No, no. Because Stearmir think... doesn't think it's worth it. Ah. I think we should let the piranha do it. Okay, the piranha I can't quite get familiar. as far as me, but yeah. No, but it's only 100 feet. Idea. I'm going to swim down with the piranha and send it ahead of me. He won't be struggling, so he can stay longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I cast Find Familiar. We lose a Find Familiar cast. We're down to two more casts of that spell. Uh, I create a piranha. And uh, it is a it's quipper, specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. The quipper stat block. Let me pull that up. There's no way to do the upside down boat thing, right? No, the upside down boat thing is a lie. A the buoyancy yeah, yeah. would pull it directly to the surface and you would never Thank be you. able to pull it down with you. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Well, you could, if you had like a small airtight box, like a very small box. You would need the correct amount of counterbalances of weights to prevent it from like floating upward. It, it would be more hassle well, yeah, than it would be worth. Here. Building a submarine is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What does he see with the piranha? Well played. Yes. Uh, the piranha has dark vision 60 foot, passive perception 8, uh, and mm -hmm. it has 40 feet of swim speed, and it can go 100 feet away from me. If any of that yeah. Helps. So the piranha can see that you, you get maybe, you know, like 80 feet down the tunnel, 60, 80 feet down the tunnel. The piranha gets another 100 feet beyond that. And then it can see another 60 feet beyond that. And somewhere near the edge of its vision, you can tell that there is a surface, that the water path ends. You can't see what's beyond it. There's not like light streaming in and things visible, um, but there is a surface. Now maybe, Maybe the cave just goes back and there's like a slightly raised area with like a small water pocket, but it's a, otherwise a dead end. But there Maybe is it's a whole nother cave there. Maybe there's enough air that there you could breathe. Maybe there's not enough air that you could breathe. Maybe it's poison. There's no way of knowing what is down here, but there is an end to the tunnel and it does look like there's a difference between water and some sort of gas there. But for all you know, it could be poisonous. We depleted okay. oxygen. So we're saying it's about 170 feet away. Is that what we're saying? It's something like More or that. Less. Down the tunnel, right? But you still have to hop, dive uh -huh. down into the tunnel and swim forward. And, you know, it's how far uh, can you swim in around? Uh, I think you we're going to say that you. Oh, man, the dash swim. I hate the dash swim and the dash climb. Okay. Maybe I hate you them with them. Yeah, fuck that. Passion of a thousand tons. So you can do like 15 well, feet per round. Um, can a rogue dash swim? No. Okay. Maybe, Say someone who like know. is a sailor, maybe. You would have to like spec into this somehow. I mean, I am a sailor, so I'll, maybe I am the oh, okay, best actually, place yeah. to do it. So, you know, you think, judging by what everyone said, you could probably make that distance in two minutes. And I've got also got plus two con modifier. Yeah, yeah. The... we wouldn't you be able could... to bring our armor with us. Right. That's correct. No. 
You have to go naked. Do you want to go with? Do you want to go with me, Stearmere? Um, wait. Iron Grip will say I could swim halfway and have my piranha jump out of the water at the other end to see if the gas is breathable. What else could, could it piranha be? Piranha, no. How would um, your piranha know if the gas was breathable? It can't breathe damage? outside of water. Yeah, no. Well, like it would leap into the air, and if it immediately takes poison damage, we'll know that it's like poisonous gas. I guess no? there's no reason to not to check if it's poisonous gas there. I mean, like in theory, there is like lava around here, so it could be like a buildup of like carbon monoxide or something yeah. like that. But I don't think not that, that we not that know. we would know that yeah, though. No, yeah, we would. So. Know that, yeah. well, but you understand that miners, people who dig in the earth do run into pockets of poison gas. And you don't know what it is, but okay. they, they will suffocate. This is an old problem with mines that every now and then a rift opens or something happens. And then like bring a cannery. the miners yeah. just yeah. die. Yeah. Iron well, Grip thinks going into the tunnel is stupid. That is Iron Grip's position. Iron Grip <laughs> will put his armor back on. I don't think it's stupid. I think it's not worth it. If Cassian really, really wants to explore it, then I think Stamir will offer to go in place of Cassia. I don't think it's worth it. I think we're already... I think the, I think the Cyclops had something, Sumir. I will go with you. There's no you point in really both risking it, Cassian. Can. There's no point in both risking it. I can hold my breath for four minutes, Iron Grip says, takes his armor back off and dives in and starts swimming. <laughs> As Iron I have goes. the piranha going ahead of me. Okay. Okay. I shrug at Cassian as he jumps in. Cypher Iron Grip got really tired of this conversation. <laughs> I'm swimming. And I'm doing it like determinedly. He's like, he's going one way. Your quipper swims before you. I got no way to get him out. No, the, he's on his own. You get... You know, your quipper's well ahead of you. You're, you're making progress down this tunnel. It sees that, like, surface area. And you, you send your quipper leaping out into the, the surface. That, that was a question. Yes. It flops. Oh, I to... Onto the air. It lands on the ground. Kind of doing the, well, the dying it... fish thing. Well, I wanted to, like, get a good run and up yeah. out of the water, oh, yeah. and I wanted to see the room. What does it see? What does it see? Perception check? Yeah, give me a perception it has dark check. Vision. But Six still, it's, dark it's a vision. fish that's seeing in air instead of water. It's a mess. It's dying. Air has a similar refractive index as, as, as what was it? Water. I'm just saying that a creature designed to see in water may not see as well in air. That's all I'm saying. All right, just give me a perception check. Here. Was it plus you want, eight? You want my, was wait, it? I think... Does it use my perception? Or its own? Oh. Well, you've been rolling the raven's perception this the far. Ravens, yeah. Okay, I'll use the quippers. It has minus two wisdom, so that would be... D20 minus two. Jesus. Just roll well. 11. It's fine. Okay. I'm going to DM you on Discord what you see. Uh... Oh yeah. Uh, fucking DM me. Give me the secret intel. She's DMing you because you're not gonna be able to talk to us anymore after this. <laughs> Do you continue? Uh with hunger and lust in his heart, I continue. Fuck. Uh, I should have went. Excellent. Do I, see I think literally is that the only thing I see? Well, that, no, that's what the fish sees when it plops out. But you can get to the end on your own. I think you dismiss the fish after a moment. Probably you're not gonna let it. Yep. You're not gonna let your familiar suffer, right? I would. I would let it flop around for. It's a magical creature. It's not real. I would let it flop around to see if anything happens to it. Uh, yes, something happens to it. Something. I immediately turn around. It. You turn around. And leave. I leave. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. You can <laughs> I leave emerge from the water. <laughs> what was it? What'd you see? Did you make it? Baby ogres. Baby ogres. It's their children. And like you'll see in Iron Grip's face, a hunger you've never seen before. 
Why do you come back? Something hit my fish. Well, yeah, Something baby ogre. Big? No, I don't know. But I want some baby back ribs. <laughs> we found out what they were hiding. It's of no interest to us. We should leave and continue our mission. A baby ogre to raise as our own? Are you insane? Drove razor. Uh, are you? A child of the maw? Raises you your own? left alone with no children? With no parents? We need to rest anyways. I agree with you, Cypher. I don't think there's any needless bloodshed that needs to be happening on these baby ogres. Mm -hmm, they're fucked anyway. Yeah, I say we can't here stop. for the night. We leave it tomorrow. We can't leave children of the Maw defenseless. Do you want to little... eat them or do you want to help them? Both As you said, are the, the little same creatures action. in the ground will eat them. The Maw will still get its fill. But I'm an agent of the Maw. I, I hunger also. You know, I think there's more of those brain things around here. I reckon those ogres are done for. Without the Cyclops to protect them. Old the man. brains will get them in the end. Do you have what? sheep in your homeland? Yes, Hobgoblin. Are not the baby sheep the most succulent? The lambs of the fresh season? Yes, that is true. But uh, it's not true with all animals. We don't eat baby pigs. I? You don't? He Not says really. that over, like with sincere confusion. You've never had a suckling pig on a skewer? Okay, it's... well, maybe I have, but it's not typically what we do. You know, usually we fatten them up. It's like peeling delicious flesh from crispy crackling. It's it's all the best parts in one. The bones crunch in your mouth like exactly a candy. And, and if we get back on our boat and sail to Blup, we could be eating roast pig in a matter of days. Mont instead steps of forward. Dying. We are not yes, killing babies. And eating them then, as well. Correct, Mom. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Jaw Razor looks really crestfallen. Cypher <laughs> says something in Hobgoblin to, um, to Draw Razor that I have DM'd you. Okay. Jaw Razor looks incredibly crestfallen and like looks longingly at the tunnel the water and then slowly starts to put his clothes back on please Thank make a map for, for this location it. uh can we rest we can rest before heading on yeah or maybe we should just head on actually i suppose do we need to short rest or how far like it's probably only been like an hour since we got up hasn't yeah it? i guess we yeah. don't need uh yeah, yeah we, we should carry on agreed okay back to the map back to the journey It is many days yet through the Badlands. What are our resources like? Does anyone have any spells remaining? No. Yes. Do we get a do we get a long do we get a sorry, a short rest? How many short rests do we have? That'll tell you what our resources are. Excellent. Well, I just wanted to know um for the day. Can I get I two level ones and one level two? Right, well for the day you want a D one hundred? I want a D one hundred for the day. What? Right down it is a fine way. day. Okay. All right. And our calendar. I just don't think they'd keep the treasure in the fucking baby's room. Lads. I'm just saying, if we had got a baby ogre and one of us dies, one of us could have played an ogre. That's all I'm saying. Ogre, I think, is Ogre a race you can play? I've Why played not? Ogre. Listen, that's my, that's my out of character argument for going back into that cave and kidnapping a baby Ogre. I just think that there would be like one or two more big Ogres in there actually. We got it. I just also think that in character, everything here makes sense. The only reason we would think that there's treasure in there is because of metagaming, right? I don't think it's like why would why would ogres there. even why would ogres even have treasure? But they live in the middle of shiny things. They're just... like they're like crows. They love yeah, but things. they're in the middle of the fucking badlands. Like what treasure have they got? I think the cyclops just had like a family that he was like protecting and raising, and that was well. These are baby house. ogres, not baby cyclops. I know. I just think the cyclops was like in control of this group. 
Yeah. So and I he left think... his treasure with the baby ogres? No, I don't think there is a treasure. Yeah, yeah I don't know there's any the treasure. Baby ogres are the treasure, dude. You're not thinking yeah. with your stomachs. <laughs> Um, Listen, it's a, so once, in a, once in a lifetime opportunity to create a non-evil ogre in Neil's world. We had an ogre. We had an ogre player character in Tides of Death. Remember, Moot uh, played yeah, one. That was me. But we get we get to create him. You know what I mean? Yeah. We get to mold but him. we're not going to play this campaign for the next thirty years in game. So. Yeah. That's not going to happen. You're just going to carry around a baby ogre that makes your life hard until the campaign. But ends. we could set him up for a future campaign in this world. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Ten Chance. days pass of Badlands exploration before oh, there is so an encounter. The wizard gets all of our spells back, whilst I sit with nothing. I get my spells back. back without a spell to Don't use. Fuck. Yeah. Should have chosen a different class. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do believe in this time everyone will have gotten back to full HP by expending hit dice oh, yeah. and also still be at full hit dice. Uh, but Nick still has two failed death saves. Yeah. Yes. A long oh, rest is needed. Oh, yeah. How many short rests do we get? Ten. Ten. Eleven. Ten. Yeah. Oh, dude, I am. I know. You're, 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 you're literally back to. It's like. One thing I think you want to consider, Neil, is your long rest variant rules buff wizards relative to other spellcasters quite a lot. Do they? Yeah, because the the short rest arcade recovery is a lot more powerful when you're not short. You're not getting a long rest very often. I did nerf my wizard by taking none of the good spells. Yeah, sure. I'm just saying that it's an unintended consequence of the the variant. R In the situation rolling. where you are traveling for a long time with no long rests, then wizards do become more powerful. But I think a like two week journey of short rests and no long rests is a, a relatively rare thing. Um, okay. I, but, yeah. By the way, I don't get relentless endurance back until a long rest. Is there any way for me to denote that I've used this and don't have it available? Um, Just use case, that you know, great brain of yours session. and remember. All right. It's wait, wait, on, your, on the main page of your character sheets, do you not have something like under characteristics? That's where I've got my channel divinity and my wrath of the storm. Uh, oh yeah, you've got those little things. Yeah. The things are like customizable trackers that you can use. Anyway, while we're sorting that out, Nick, will you roll me a D twenty? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, let's go. Yeah. And would uh you roll me another D twenty, Nick? Oh, now it's going to be a one. Okay. Ten. That's all right. That's good. Oh, Middle no, of the road. Cool. That's good. Um, no, it's great. The, you see some Zorn one day. Wow. Um, and Ostigan will point them out to you and tell you about them. And Ethan can tell you a little bit more if you would like. Um, Zorn are these weird tripod-like earth elemental creatures They've got like three arms and three legs and three eyes and a mouth in the, between them all and sharp teeth. And they can like move through stone as if they were walking just across the land. Um, but you're in a boat. And yeah. so you're we've safe. Gotten, we've oh, no yeah. reason to mess around with them. Yeah, unless you wanted to hop off your boat and go attack a Zorn. Um, there's no, nope. nope. no, thank you. What is a Zorn? Does it look tasty? It's an earth elemental. It doesn't. It's not very tasty. It's literally made of rocks. But powdered, it could be a seasoning. <laughs> we continue could, on. We continue on. <laughs> Droll Razor will argue that this could be of a great culinary benefit. I'll ask Droll Razor a question um, on our 10-day journey. Uh, Droll Razor, where is the maw if not um, in the sky with the other gods? Do you think it's? Do you think they live down here? Uh, of course. The ball wouldn't live in the sky, it would eat it. Um, and in fact, uh, at the end of time, the maw will open up and swallow the sky, including all the gods. Um, the stars will go dark and all of creation will go cold uh, as it consumes all of the life force in the universe. Oh, wow, it's like entropy, guys. Hell yeah. He gets real quiet on the boat. The rest of the oh. boat journey. Oh, good. This is a good fate. Uh, peace. Along, along the journey, um, Cypher will sometimes make conversation with Cassian, you know, about battle techniques, um, mentioning 
ones that he's used and you know all it, all very much like technical talk and review but a, a, as she does show she will always like drop like little compliments to his fighting style here and there and how she uh, thinks that that hit was really good and the way she he swings that and blah 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 but you know also it's for the most part it just sounds like she's doing battle talk how does okay. how does Cassian handle these conversations um at the start, Cassie would be a little gruff, but then eventually he'll kind of get over the fact that you ignored him and killed the ogre, um, and do pretty much extensively just battle talk with you. I don't think he picks up on it all, uh, anything else. He's just very like, oh, yes, we can talk about how we would fight in the next battle. Like, mm -hmm. this is a good change of pace versus his old allies who did nothing. Um, do Sturmir and Iron Grip notice this exchange between these two characters that they seem to be kind of small boat chatting intimately it's yeah. a small boat it makes my you know racist uncle has stand on end and i feel uncomfortable about it i can't really put it into words as to why i feel uncomfortable about it but i do iron grip will lean over <laughs> to Sturmir and said perhaps a quarter orc could be on the cards <laughs> <laughs> oh god i hope not no, you have to imagine that. It would look as human as you, but have the power of orcs. Maybe. Or maybe it would be an abomination, despised by all the gods, old and new. Well, humans are an abomination. They're the only creatures on this earth made of strange, weak flesh. Look at my skin, and Drolf Razor will like, hold out his arm, and his skin is like thick like leather. Look around you, Drolf Razor. The hobgoblins are... On the fringes of society, humans control this world. Drove Razor will scoff and say, ha, you've only seen this part of the world. I'm not actually, I'm from a totally different part of the world. Hobgoblins here, you seem a lot more reasonable. The ones back home are feral. No, 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 they're feral here too. They're not oh. reasonable at all. <laughs> <laughs> I should know I grew up with them. <laughs> what do you expect when you build your whole society around eating one another? Whoa, 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 whoa. We are the civilized ones. The uncivilized ones, they just like fighting. We enjoy the culinary pursuits of the world. Uh, in fact, there is a great legend of a restaurant that great beasts were hunted for. <laughs> uh, it was staffed exclusively by children of the Maw. Uh-huh. Sounds like your kind of place. Doesn't sound like it's from my kind of tastes. Yeah, Drove Razor will sit back when you say that and say, yeah, it did. And he'll, like, think longingly of the <laughs> great restaurant that uh, feasted upon beasts. Mm. Yeah. What a wonderful time. Well, you travel along the desert. The badlands twist and whine, and soon the canyons around you grow until you're in just, like, you know, you're on the river, um, the river has gotten wider again. It's no longer these like little narrow channels. Now it's maybe like 400 feet across. Um, it doesn't look like it's too deep. And there's maybe like 30 feet at best on any given stretch of um, gentle land. And then like towering cliffs that reach up 30, 40, 50, 60 feet, depending on where you go. And as the as you go deeper and deeper <clears throat> into the badlands, those cliffs get shallower and shallower and shallower as you slowly wind your way uphill through the river um, eventually in September I'm sorry we pass all the way through September in October you begin to pass out of the badlands you leave so the broken crusted terrain behind mm -hmm. for context how long have we been on this boat for now uh, you've been seven days from the arch to the the cave, cave and then 14 and then days yeah. from the cave to the Everglades. So it's been so three weeks. Three weeks in a tiny boat sleeping in a tiny hut. Yeah, uh, plus on the, on the night this of no journey. Moon, so a little bit more. refuses to travel. Mm. On the night of no moon, Drolv Razor refuses to travel. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, it's the night of the long darkness. Uh, if you travel on this <laughs> night, you're likely to be attacked by the spirit world. Interestingly. So he just straight up refuses. Interestingly enough, that coincides with a holiday that our two original characters might be familiar with. 
um, because October 1st is the day that Astaire begins his rise into the world, and it is known as Repentance Day. It is a day to um, to seek atonement for the wrongs that you've done, and often at times it's met under Good King Arnold. Repentance Day was always a, a day to like. Um, what do you call it when you par- pardon? It was a day to pardon or commute the sentences of prisoners who seem particularly. Um, you know. I will offer essentially like confession to the group then on this day. <laughs> I think uh, Cassian probably knows what I'm doing. I think it's maybe a thing yeah. that clerics do on this day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll do it for Cassian first. Just let him confess any sins to me and I'll absolve him. And then I'll offer it to the rest of the group and I'll say, um, we have a holiday back home. This is the day we celebrate Astaire's ascension. And it's a time for uh, atonement and making right the wrongs of the past. If any of you have sins that you would like to confess, I will hear them and in the name of Astaire, atone for you. Um, Draw Razor completely misinterprets what this religious holiday is and uh, starts listing off all the th- ways people have wronged him. <laughs> Just starts like... <laughs> well, that's very interesting, uh, Draw Fraser, but unless they're here, I cannot atone their sins. Only yours. I think ah, Cassian okay. will confess uh, cowardice in the pre... I guess the first episode, um, when they were on the boat and the boat was starting to sink, Cassian went for his greatsword rather than helping others. Um... So I think that is his confession and something that he regrets. I listen to that and will, uh, I'll say it was a difficult time for all of us. There were no right decisions. You are forgiven. After looking into the distance for a while and like trying to speak up a bit and then not speaking up and then speaking up again, Cypher will say, I suppose I do have a story to share. Then you can share with the group, Cypher, or if you prefer to just share with me privately, that's also fine. Yeah, Cassian did his private. Is there a privacy on the boat? I think we're, we're parked whispers? for the night because oh, um, yeah. Yeah, Razor refuses to travel, and I oh, yeah. think it's a nice day to do some festivities. Um, So we can walk off a little bit if you want. Yeah, sounds good. This was much before I met Drove Razor or Julia we were out with my group with my horde in the steps as we were for a while mm-hmm. and I was out scouting the lands for others and for hunting it was my job that day and I stumbled across a man who had gotten hurt, badly wounded. And they were on the ground and they were bleeding out. And the rule that we had back in the horde was that before helping others and before taking action, we would consult with the group, make sure that they agreed. You have to understand those were different times out there and it's it was quite harsh and if you saw someone who was in trouble there was a very good chance that they were playing a trick on you. Mm -hmm. But this man was so close to death and for some reason the way his eyes looked at me I they were such deep green and I just couldn't turn away so I picked him up and carried him through the step back to the group and as I laid him down next to our campfire he vanished the very next day that spot where we were camping our group was attacked. Half of us were killed, and the others were taken hostage. But I never uh... told this to anyone, but there is no doubt in my mind that had I not helped this man, 
we might still be out there and most of us would still be alive. It's a harrowing tale, Cypher. Um, you may have the strength of an orc, but you have the heart of a human. And whilst Astaire does want us to follow the rules of our tribe, it's also important that we follow our nature. And I don't think that you should feel ashamed for having empathy for a fellow human. And you are forgiven, and Astaire forgives you. It means a lot, old man. Mm -hmm. Even if I might not feel the same way. Astaire and I, we see you for who you really are, Cypher. A good person, orc or not. She will quietly sit on that, and I think we'll walk back. Yeah. That story oh. didn't go where uh, Stermia thought it was going to go. And it was actually, the, the last bit was a bit of a shock. But I think he manages to put aside his uh, his innate feelings of hatred for the, not hatred, but a distrust of the monster races and gives some good advice there and helps hopefully give Cypher some peace and spirit with the, the holiday. Ostigan, right. on this day, will also share a story with you. Mm -hmm. I often work as a guide through the Badlands. Of course. There have been times where money has been hard. I have not always been able to make ends meet well. One time, I'm broke. I owe bad people lots of money. There's a group, a group of heroes. They want to go to Blop. I'm in Bellwind. So I say, sure, follow me. I guide you through desert. Price, two gold per day to Blop. They say, sure. Me, I'm broke. My debts are very large. If I leave town for too long, People I owe money to, they come from my family. It's not good. I have no time to go to Blop. So, take them to Badlands. I take them away from river. Take them through winding passages. Find a good cave. Then I say, here, give me water skins. I go to secret water hole. I bring back water. I take all their skins. I leave. I come back three days later. I take their money. I take the stuff off their bodies. And I go back to Bellwind. That is, uh... It's a difficult story to hear, Ostkin. Not least given our current circumstances here. Uh, I, I know I'll cheat you. But life is better but... now. Life is easier now. But one day... I kill four heroes by deception. You may find it hard to believe, but many, many good men have done many, many terrible things. And in my role as a, a priest on days like this, I've forgiven people for far worse than that. Bad act done in times of desperation to preserve one's family. That's just human nature. And whilst, yes, you should feel guilt for that and you should come to terms with it, in your own mind and perhaps spend some time praying at the temple back in the city you shouldn't let it control your life and you should mm. allow yourself to move past it I forgive you Astaire forgives you no he does not when I get back to Bellwind my family is dead message written for me in house in their blood I pay for mm. my crimes I still and live. You think this is the work of a star? Oh, uh, this is Velmontarius. This is justice. Perhaps vengeance. Mm. But the gods bad. have better things to do than interfere directly in the lives of, no offense, commoners. He shrugs. This is my. This is my um, albatross. Well, perhaps you shouldn't wear it around your neck. 
I think the day continues in awkward, uncomfortable silence as people bear their darknesses. Yeah. But on Sunday... Does he see a reason to be uh, repentant for the things that he's done? Because he sees them as like, these were good things he did. So he tells his crimes proudly. <laughs> yeah. But you're not particularly looking for atonement, are you? So. No. That's anyway, that's the end the of the same. day. Yeah. Uh, Stamia thinks on Ostigan's story and is quite troubled by it. Because despite saying nice words to him, that is pretty harrowing. Like, much worse than uh, Cypher's story. Yeah, yeah, and like the morality of that is fucked. <laughs> that was an encounter that was waiting for you in Bellwind if you had decided to walk through the Badlands on foot. There was a. Oh, really? <laughs> there was an option for that to be the sort of person you find that would lead you. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, yep. seven days later, we make it to the Everglades. There's still the tall cliff of Voden on your east, but the western slopes just fade to mountains, and soon there are trees, and the water loses its like impossibly dark colors, and you hear like birds, and within a couple of hours of breaking free from like there's a almost a hard line where the badlands are and the the Everglades are, um, you find yourself in a uh, warm, a humid, swampy, jungly mess where water just extends in all directions. And there's like mangrove forests over here that almost make a wall, but you can see that there's just water between it. And then over there, there's like different channels that go places. And there's like a large creature whose fins come out of the water and then it slips back down and Ostigan points it out and goes, uh, eel. And you find yourself transported from one environment to a wildly different environment very, very fast. Place Jeremy is... doesn't share with Cassian or anything Ostigan's stuff, right? Um, not while we're on the boat. Okay. I, I think I might share it one day. later on. Yeah. Uh, the jellyfish, Neil, do they stop at the line where the Badlands stops? Or do they frequent the swamp a little bit as well no the jellyfish stop actually well before the everglades okay yeah okay right well here you so are in the everglades your guide will tell you that it's about 23 miles to blup it'll take uh maybe two days to get there since you have to kind of go slowly and it, it's not a uh, a straight shot you have to go around these things there may not be a good land place depending on you know how much things have grown and, and how much things have been destroyed Ostigan will tell you that the swamp is home to many things and even though the terrain looks pretty stable you can come around an area and find that like trees have been ripped up or have just walked away and there's land to rest. Or you might find that land that you once stopped at is now um, completely blocked off by, by new growth or has been sunk into the ground or is the home to a very large, angry looking frog. Um, and so you may or may not get a spot of rest before you get to Blup. We might have to sleep on the boat. Understood. I think with that, we should go to our next break. And we'll come back on the other side Wait, for our hang, last hang, hang segment. Are we ending in 17 minutes to do the long after oh, show? Oh, my math is way off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So no hey, just heads up. After this uh, episode, which will end in 17 minutes, we're going to keep the stream on and we're going to do a long after show for everybody. So people who aren't patrons can see what they're missing out. We're also going to talk about our new campaign that's going to be happening after this campaign. Um, so make sure to stay tuning in because it won't be ending. Well then, we have just enough time. Roll one encounter check. All right. Um, potato McWhiskey. Yeah, yeah. Give me that D100, baby. You want high or low, or does it matter? It depends if you want an encounter or don't want an encounter. I want we an don't. encounter. Let's go. Then you want 53. low. 53. Oh, we're good. Ah, oh, nice. Fine. The blup we go. For XP. Oh. And a long and rest. And a long rest. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
to Blup we go. And we find the town of Blup. Let's see if I can just drop you on this map or not. Do we still have Pax's body with us? Should. Plax, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Blop destroyed. <laughs> is a, a town Crater. that looks like this. You have to zoom out to get a good picture of it. Oh my god. Wait, is it tiny? Oh no, okay. Oh wow. Is it like built yeah. into the swamp? It's like a floating kind of... Well, most of the huts are on land masses. And then there are bridges that connect huts and islands to huts and islands. Um, cool. And it sort of sprawls out all over the place within the swamp. You're approaching from the, the bottom side of this map, coming up through this little passage here. And as you approach, you can see people walking around in the town of Blup. But something about them is immediately off. Everyone roll me a perception check to see which of our four heroes. The four of you are all in the front of the boat. Everyone else is in the back, so you guys have the best chance of, of noticing I've got something. Web feet. Cassian. I think you're actually at the very front of the boat. This makes the most sense. These people are walking around like normal but there's some sort of weird protrusion coming off of their head, like some sort of stalk or stem or oh antenna or oh, some, fuck now. some sort of thing, just kind of like protruding off of the top of their head, ending in like a little ball, maybe, you know, a foot and a half above their head, like a little brown, dusty ball. Is this the last is very strange in this town. What are they doing? Nothing, they're just going about their days ordinarily. Some people wave at you, some people are just doing their things, hauling in catches of fish. Um, you know, it seems pretty ordinary here, aside I'll from- I'll to one of the sailors, Cor I guess. Wait, correct me if I'm wrong, Cassian. I don't recall Plax having one of these things on his head. He didn't. He wasn't living in Blup, however, was he? Ostigan. This might just be the fashion. Ostigan, they usually like this here? Shakes his head repeatedly. Ethan. When was the you last time you were here? This? Ethan shakes his head. I I half expected to find the city destroyed. Why? We've lost contact with our person here. I, I didn't think. I I do remember before we left. Uh didn't Lady Farseer mention something coming out of the swamp? Someone said that, right? My iron grip will look around. Try to remember. Us, uh, Ethan says, there's always something coming out of the swamp. Julia did mention that something was found, right? Someone. Okay. Cassian, call over a sailor or something. Well, yeah. your boat is just pulling forward, right? You're eventually, you're just going to make landfall and just, just a well, few no. more feet. No? We're not going to, we're not going to hit the land. You stop the boat. On it. Or you tell no, Austin to turn. like, stop the boat. I here. tell Austin okay. to turn. All right. Um, we're going to kind of go around and see if we can see one of the sailors. So let me bring our boat on to here. Does it smell weird? I mean, it smells like gross swamp. Okay. Mm. Do any of the uh, animals have these things coming out of their heads? There's Maybe crocodiles not or frogs really... or birds. No, Come none on. of the birds or frogs have them. You don't see many crocodiles, but you don't see any like animals hanging out with the people. There's not like a, a whole crew of pet cats lying around somewhere, you know? Yeah, sure. But if it was like a fungus infection, it'd be you'd think it'd be everything. Sure. Um, so your boat is like coming up through this area when you begin to notice these things because you know there's a lot of trees and brush and it's you don't always have a great distant view. So when you get to about here is when you notice. Then everyone chatted for a little while, and I think the boat slowed to a stop somewhere over here while you're all chatting about what the hell this stuff could be. Yeah, um, I'm going to have it turn, and maybe if we can, go to a sailor. Yeah, what there's somebody... There's not a lot of sailors here, but there, you know, there's someone who is um, pulling in some crabs off of a trap right here. You know, they've got a cage that they lower into the water and then it fills with creatures and they raise it. And so you could, you know, you could shout across yeah. to uh, this it, person. Oh, wait, people talking with each other amongst yeah. themselves? Yeah, seemingly. 
And okay. I mean, the, you know, it's a small the area. Is, There's not a shit ton of people. You don't have a great time to observe, but you do see someone like handing another person a fish and what appears to be conversation between them, but you can't overhear it because it's far enough away. Okay. Is no one noticing us? Is anyone like paying us no, attention? No, someone has we... waved to you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll call to the fisherman and say, mm -hmm. "What is what is that out of your head?" <laughs> Excuse me. Kind of shake. Lost what is that thing good about this place? Growing up the top of your head. I've not seen it before. I'm sorry. Um, who are you? Ostigan. All right. Take us out of here. Skip blub. I'm a cleric. Ethan says, "I we can't skip Blop. But I'm here. The let me off. off the boat, Ethan. Pull Ethan, me up to shore. Let me let me get off here. Are Wait. you serious? Why are we skipping Blop? They're just wearing hats. What's wrong with you guys? Ostigan, this is an order. Ostigan says, uh, Ostigan begins to just slowly turn the boat. Um, he pulls out his poles. Um, and Wait, begins to turn how the pole far around. is the next town? Is there a village? He shakes his head. No, mm, not until we are out of Blup. Then we are in plains. Then um, I, I do not know, but I'm sure you walk around plains, you find people or, or um, centaurs. There, there are lots of centaurs in plains. Uh, they, you fight Cassian. ogre. You can fight centaur. It's Cassian, fine. Maybe we should we should think about this. We're wounded. We're uh, out of spells. We should at least have a real conversation with these people. You guys started this conversation like a bunch of oafs and then were incredulous as to why they weren't responding properly. Let's go there yeah. properly, introduce ourselves, and actually talk to them. Were you raised we're in the wild group without outside any of this, And then we'll have a conversation. Keep going, Ostigan. Yeah, he will pull you through the water. He looks a little relieved um, until you are outside of the... It's not really a walls, but outside of the, the immediate zone of Blup where you can no longer see any of the buildings and everything is blocked by uh, reeds and plants and shrubs and mangrove trees. Iron Grip will su suggest blinding one of the villagers and kidnapping them if they really think there's something weird going on. It's probably not a good idea. I have the blindness spell. I should be fine. I also don't think we should do that. I think if we're going to stay here, we need to be on good terms with the locals. I think if we start abducting people, then we might as well just leave. What? What's an abduction between two people? It's they weren't immediately hostile with us. They were talking normally. To, they were talking normally with us. They reacted weirdly because you just started talking about what was on their head without even introducing yourself as a complete stranger in this. Village. Okay, I appreciate. My grandmother I appreciate was abducted that by my grandfather, and she lived a long and happy life. <clears throat> why don't we let Ethan out? I want Ethan. Why don't you go and have a conversation and report back? Is we can pay you some gold for your services if you want a nickel and diamonds. I'll go with Ethan. These people seem nice. What seems nice about them, Drove Razor? These are the first people you've not wanted to eat. That alone makes me worried. Like, you can sense that he they're infected. Say, he didn't say he didn't want to eat them. They don't smell like food. Mentioned. Well, exactly. That's my point. There's clearly something going on here. Ethan. If we... I, I'd like going? to think... I'd like you to think about the impression that we're making here. We've already made a horrible first impression. It's not like these people will just... It's its a village, and, like, they were they would probably be friendly to visitors. But if a group of people pulls up there, says something really rude, then immediately fucks off, and then one of them comes back suspiciously, they're probably not going to think the highest of us. I think if we want to actually stay with these people and, like, find out if there's anything weird going on or... If we can stay there or not, we should go back there. We should apologize for being so rude and talk to them. And as soon as something really does get weird, we still have a pretty good chance to get away. Nobody cares if you're rude and if you have coin. We have coin. Ethan, I agree yes. with Stumir. You should go check it out. All right. And uh, back. I'd like to go with Ethan. Hold on. If you want to go this with Ethan, not, you can. I won't stop you. This is not decided. Hold on. Stop, Ethan. Drove Razor, what do you think we should do? It's a town. The people seem friendly. What is the issue? Why are we hesitating? How are you not getting this? There's fucking I... mushrooms growing out of their heads. Iron Grip. 
Yeah. It was not like this the last time Osteon was here. Something has happened. Lady Farsia indicated something has happened here. They've lost all and communication with the town, and now they have fungus growing out of their heads. No, maybe weird. Well, humans do not look like, like this. It's... Would you not build a house with a rock that had moss growing on it? Like, <laughs> sometimes okay. turtles have barnacles. What? What is the issue? They're right. It's too strange. It's we should be a little bit more careful. Send Ethan. Let's uh, let us send okay. the defenseless human. Hey, I'm not defenseless. He's not defenseless. I, I and he wants to for himself. He wants to get out regardless. So let him. Yeah. Agreed. Ethan will right. sit. We'll and he coins, will return in a, with a mushroom on his head, and you will not want to talk to him as well. I'm going. Well, if with that's you. the case, then we will leave. And if you come back with a mushroom head, Drolf Razor, we'll leave without you. I'll give your mother my mushroom. <laughs> if Draw Razor wants to go, my mother is Cassie dead. Not gonna stop. Oh, grateful hot goblin. The boat pulls over to this little island over here, rather than going to the heart of the city. And Ethan will hop off and scamper down this oh, rotting plankway. I motion for Draw Razor to go with them. Yeah, I'm going with him. I'm going. Yeah, I'm go going with him. Yeah. No, 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 no. Draw Razor, oh. you should stay with us. Right. Were like, it's too suspicious. I can't risk you coming back with a mushroom growing out of your head. You should... Razor has like one foot on land and will like sigh and put his foot back in the boat and like and kind of slump down. We'll pull you back and, out uh, into the water. Cypher will say Ethan, something. Ethan, meet us back in... here tomorrow, I say. Hobgoblin. Tomorrow? No, meet us back here in an hour. Okay, in an hour. Oh. Yeah. You can see Ethan walks down the plank way and uh, runs into a person over here at this intersection. And that uh, seems to be involved in some sort of conversation. And Ethan ends up like patting his weapons and pointing to the bow and, you know, reaches out his hand, his, his gloved hand, to shake the person. <clears throat> person shakes his hand and uh, points back to a house and points down the walkway. And then Ethan and the person proceed down the walkway and are quickly lost, you know, behind buildings. We come back an hour later. I mean, yeah, we wait for him to come back. Is he instructed to come back? <laughs> yeah. He was yeah, instructed yeah, to yeah, come yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. But you know, this is a time when people don't have watches. There's no way to know what an hour is. You yeah. might have like an hour glass, um, but no two hour glasses are the same. You need no, like, the that's, same. That's fine. Right. But he knows the difference between an hour and five hours, though. Totally, right? So you're yeah. sitting here in the swamp. You're waiting. There's weird bubbles coming out of the swamp. Ostkin tells you not to worry about it. You know, it's just swamp bubbles. It's fine. Um, while you're here, Ostkin will remind you to stay out of the swamp water. It tells you that there is grasping grass down there, that the plants um, feed off of creatures that cannot breathe water, and they will literally drown you and then absorb you into their flesh. That there are electric eels and razorfish, and um, what is your piranha-like creature called? A quipper. Quipper swarms here. It's interesting. Do you know what we have in the water back home? Boats and fish. Boats are not monsters. Oh, well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. This place is a fucking hellscape. As we wait and look for Ethan, does he come back? Yeah, I mean, some time passes and everyone's like, has it been an hour? And someone's like, I don't know, it's only been 45 minutes, maybe. Who knows? And, you know, more time passes and someone's like, what, has it been an hour? And someone's like, well, it's got to be an hour by now. But, like, it's really hard to know. And so more time passes. And eventually, when everyone is certain that it's been at least an hour and a half or maybe two hours, at the bare minimum, um, the conversation turns to what do we do because he isn't back yet and he should be by now. Do we still see people walking around? Yeah. Um, How far yeah, is until the sun sets? Hour, hour and a half? And, all right, is there, is, there, yeah. is there guards here? Are there people walking around with weapons or not? There are a lot of people walking around with spears, and it's hard to tell if they're like fishing spears or fighting spears, or maybe there's double for both. Um, and there are people yeah. with bows, short bows. So... It looks like it's a quite well-armed population, but maybe no official guards. Yeah, you haven't seen anyone in armor, and you haven't seen anyone wearing, like, a uniform. 
Draw Razor, can you send out the Raven and look for Ethan? I would have to recast Find Familiar. I have a quipper at the moment. Land for that. Ugh, here's the thing. Um... Here's the thing, guys. Uh, do we really want to sleep on the boat here? No. We wait till nightfall. And then, then what? We'll go to the land. We will have our tiny hut. And we will leave Bluff. If... <laughs> Maybe check back for Ethan in the morning. You know when uh, sometimes you'll pick a mushroom in the forest and a bunch of spores will fly out of it? Mm. That's how they make new mushrooms, right? What if... Uh, what if the spores are, like, you know, here? What if we're risking ourselves just being here? Yeah. I don't like this place. Wait for I nightfall. think I could eat a mushroom well, before it eats me. As you're waiting in the boat, and nightfall is soon approaching, eventually, after you've been parked in the harbor, essentially, for a while, um, a, a good citizen of Blup, will come on out to this point and, and wave to the boat and shout the, the 50 feet to you. Hey! Hey there. Hello! You, have you seen Hello. our friend? His name's Ethan. No, I don't know him. Hey! Yeah. Have you heard the good word of Ood? We have not. Did you say food? Draw Razor will start paddling the boat to the shore. Draw Razor will not paddle the boat because he <laughs> fucking can't. No, we have not. Who is Ood? Ah, oh, come. Let me tell you about Ood. And I think can you maybe give us that the, uh, is where we can end rundown. our session for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Cool. Um, but if you stick around, you'll get to see the after show. I don't think we actually even need to kill the stream. I think we can just transition, break, and come back. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So don't go yeah, anywhere. Like one, two minute break. We'll be right back in like five minutes. minutes. Yeah. All right. Catch you guys next time on the Lazarus Expedition. I don't know like that.